Good evening, hello to everyone. Uh, welcome to the Part Work Show. Tonight we are doing the classic route master issues 99 and 100. Um, now we are expecting guests on the show tonight, but he's running a little bit late, um, so that that's fine. But we still have a co-host. We have Alex. Good evening. Uh, I hope everyone's well. Um, yeah, it seems like ages since we did a show. This week's really dragged for me. It's really dragged. Why is it yeah. really dragged? I don't know. It just feels it's really, like it's really whiz by by for me. It feels like we haven't done a show for ages. So, before I start, apologies to Yorkshire Crafter. We played our our, our old diamond painting music for the start of the show. Horlix made me. He made me. He forced me to do it. No, he didn't really. Um, we, we just did something a little bit different today. Um, so, um, yeah, and we've got some different music for the uh, Diamond Painting Show. So we stole in the music from the Diamond Painting Show onto this show. Um, right. So I want to update you on the plans. Um, obviously, this is getting complicated and it's getting quite confusing for me um, because there's certain stages that we can't do. Or it's not that we can't do, it's just that it's easier to not do. So we've got little snippets of different magazines that we haven't completed. Um, we're going to be doing 99 and 100 today, um, with the exception of certain stages, um, because we we can't put the, well, we can put the top body work on, but then we can't get at the poles when we come to put the roof on in 103 then because we can't put the top body work on, we then can't put the lower body work on. And then there's there's other bits that we can't put on. So tonight we're doing 99 and 100 as much as we can. Um, I have invited Steve, Steve-O on to help me with the driver door. Um, he's running late if he arrives. Obviously, he's got, uh, he's got prior arrange, prior appointment. So he'll get here when he gets here, if he gets here. But we can manage without him. It's just easier with him. Blah. Next week, we're doing issue 101 and 102. The week after, we're going to be doing issue 103. But we're actually going to start the show half an hour earlier at 730 and we're quite happy to extend the show by an hour, by half an hour. Well, we, with our finish times, we finish when we finish. But um, if we run from half seven to half eleven, we hope that we can get the whole issue done. Because it's not just 103, is it? It's all the bits that we've missed out. Yeah. So um, we'll do our best to get everything done. This is one of the advantages of not being the first one to do the issue anymore. It means that I can see what other people have done and we can try and work around it. Um, so hopefully we'll get 103 done, which will then knock us slightly out of sync with the magazines. Um, I like to try and do, or I'm trying to do an odd issue and then an even issue so that the last build is obviously 130, which is an even um, but somewhere along the lines, I'm pretty sure we can squeeze in three issues in one in one show or even maybe we can only get one issue done. Um, and then obviously we've got a driver and a conductor at some point. So they will be three issue shows. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll I think we'll get this done by um, by the end of furlough. Um, which is March time. And I might have um, some exciting news for you. Um, so 
do you want to shall we do the chat do you want to do the chat do you want me to do the chat <clears throat> i don't mind i can do it if you like i hate when you say don't mind well i don't i much prefer you to say i want to do the chat or i hate doing the chat you do it penny no i'll do it then i'll do it <laughs> Okay, so Penny says a gold star goes to Stephen Heisen. Uh, good evening, everyone. Can't wait for another exciting build. So much to look forward to on a Wednesday evening. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, then next one is Dano Builds. Hello, everyone. How are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Thank top of the top, top, top of the shop. I think some places might say. Okay. Uh, P40F20, hi all, uh, ready and waiting for more Rootmaster. Thank I've you. been waiting all week for this. Oh, yeah, I'm getting excited now for my next yeah. uh, And the M, uh, hi everyone, looking forward to the show. Quick question, is it too late to start the DeLorean build? That I'm not sure. I don't think it is. I've been seeing it advertised. Um, so I think you can start your subscription from issue one. But if you can't, don't turn around and go, oh, Penny said you can, because yeah. that won't wash with them. But I, I think I've seen – I keep seeing it advertised on Facebook and things. Um, so best thing to do really is have a look at the – um, is it Diecast Club? If you look up Diecast Club or, or the Ecto-1, and then if you click in the top, it will take you to the main page. Right. Uh, but I am I am 99% certain you can start the DeLorean build from, okay. from, from a new. And I'm guessing you've seen maybe some of my videos on it and others. Uh, it, it's a brilliant build, but I think there is a few issues with it that could be a bit frustrating. But then yeah. it's different. It depends. You know, everyone has different issues. You know, it's not strictly the same, but... There is a few areas of the build that a majority have had problems with or or have been disappointed with. So I'm yeah. sure you have done your research already, but well, yeah, I, I just think be that sure DeLorean, you, I think that DeLorean's the same as the Root Master in that they've given you a basic build. And mm. then if you want to take it further, it's like the Ecto, there's a couple of little mods I'm doing, the Spitfire, I'm doing a few little mods, but if I built it exactly as it comes out of the magazine, it's not a bad little build. Um, but obviously, if you want to take it further, you can. Okay. Uh, we've got Pam Bailey. Hi, Penny and Horlix. Did you get my email about MechPack? And now located in Horlix in Eastbourne, as I'm also located in Eastbourne. Andrew Jones. Yeah, I did receive yeah. it. And I forwarded it on to Horlex. Um, and I just, to be honest with you, what the main gist of it was for me was you were recommending a glue, which is absolutely brilliant to know. Basically, what he said is there's a company called MechPack that does glue. Um, you can't see this because there's a label all the way through. Um, it works out that you can buy this for like £27 for for a lot lot more than this and it works out really cheap and you just top your bottle up um i will bear that in mind but the amount of glue i've got i'm good for a while um so you know that's just how it goes the glue is quite expensive but it lasts a while but obviously if you buy it in bulk um if i was building entire entire railway setups and, and all of the cars and everything to go with it, then I'd probably get through a bottle every month or something. Um, but, yeah, I did get it. I, I promise you I did, and I will. Yeah, I, I got it. it. And I can't remember what I, I think you might have sent it to me while I was at work, and I skimmed through it. But I'll be yeah. totally honest, I did actually forget about the email, so I will have another look. And then Yeah, um, it's was, it was exactly the same boat I was in. I was at work at the time when I got it, and... Um, Obviously, I saw the bit about um, I don't know Horlicks's email, and I knew I did, so I just hit reply, typed in the first three few letters of your, your email, and it pulled up the rest. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I will have another look at that. And um, Yeah. Uh, we've got Yorkshire Crafter. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Uh, we've got Peter Whitlock. Good evening, Penny, Horlicks, and everyone. Hello, Peter Whitlock. And we've got Love Minis. Hi, all. Hello, Love Minis. Hope you're well. Uh, Mark's Mods. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Mark. 
Uh, we've got love minis. Uh, what time did the man? Uh, what what time did the man go to the dentist? De two thirty. Yeah, I had that it's joke. Still about fun after all of these years, isn't it? I had that the other day, and I didn't get it. You know what I'm like. And I I, <laughs> I did actually genuinely have a dentist appointment last week. I had one yesterday. Was that the one when I kept saying to you what time's your appointment? Two thirty, and you were like, no, three o'clock. And yeah, like, but it was a time before that. It was actually two thirty. Oh right, and, uh, okay. I said I've actually got an appointment at two thirty, and everyone was laughing, and I was like, "What's funny?" And I didn't get it. But yeah. I do now. <laughs> uh, love minis, which is faster, hot or cold? Hot because you 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 can catch a cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, we got Bill with Adrian. Hello, everyone. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> And we've got, oh, God, I've lost it. Ah, uh, P40F20, uh, due to COVID-19 restrictions, the seven dwarfs can only travel in a group of six. That, One of them isn't reminds me of, Sorry, that reminds me of a post I saw on Facebook the other day, and it said, like, due to COVID-19 restrictions uh, or social distancing, Snow White and the seven dwarfs has now been... Um, um, has now been reduced to Snow White and the Five Dwarfs. Um, the obvious one of the obvious choices to, re to to get rid of is obviously Sneezy, although everyone is questioning um, the decision to cut Doc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, we've got <laughs> Christine say hello, everyone. Hello, uh, Christine. How are you? I hope you're fitting well or getting fitter and weller. As the, as the as the case may be. Okay, we've got Chris Campling. Hi, Penny Horlitz and everyone. Hello, Chris Campling. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your support. Uh, we've got Alex, uh, Demetrius. Uh, hi, I hope you're all uh, well. Looking forward to tonight's bill, Penny. Lovely. Hi, hi, Alex. Another guy I wouldn't have able to, to... Well, I could have progressed without him, but my bus certainly looks better thanks to his spare parts twice. <laughs> And love minis, a penny pit stop while it's having a hard time because he's cold at work without the hoodie. Yeah, I know that's that's going in the post, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Camplin, you need to clean your room, Penny, or is it an organized mess? Laugh out loud. What's this pick on Penny Day, is it? Um, yeah, no, my room's getting there. Um, tomorrow's my big clean up day. Um, I get two days off a week if if um. If I, I always get Wednesday off, but if I get a day before Wednesday, then that's clean up day. Unfortunately, my days off this week is Wednesday, Thursday. So Wednesday's my mess the day up, mess the room up day, and then the other day is clean the room. So hopefully the bed will be sorted out by tomorrow. Well, work in progress, isn't it? You've been busy with yeah. trying to make your make I, think your... I might have to move soon as well. <laughs> so um I don't know. Oof, I don't know whether it's whether to pack everything up or or tidy everything. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've got Dave's hobbies. Hi, all. Looking forward to your building chat. Thank Hi, Dave. Dave. And Chris Campin, looking at looking at fretting yeah. the new XO One Lego looks big. No, it's funny you say that. I was talking to Bill with Adrian. Oh, getting, sorry, yeah. Look at, yeah. Look at getting. No, I was talking to um, Bill with Adrian today, and I'm like, what do you reckon? Should I get that for my channel? Because I do like a bit. And I ain't done it. The last Lego I did was my R2-D2, which um, Fleetwood J bought me for Christmas last year. Yeah. I was at, no, no, that was last, yeah, Christmas, just Christmas just gone. God, do you know it seems so long since we last had a Christmas? Well, that's it. Oh, I've, I love that was my last Lego project. The, yeah. The well, what about your technique that you bought? Yeah, I've got this one here. I need to. Oh, I've got this one here. Oh I God, I like to do that. Oh, that sounds like me getting the bus off the shelf. Oh wow! It's a fairground ride, and um, it's one of them travelling ones, and it actually folds up and goes on the lorry, oh, and fantastic. then you can like pull the lorry round and you get all these everything you see you get so you get all the the carnival games all the the lego men um you get two lorries you get the lorry that pulls the ride 
um, and it all folds away, Fantastic. and then you get a, another lorry that has take you know takes all the other bits. Um, so yeah, oh. I really wanted this, but it's rare. Well, you know now. I, was, I was about to take the Mickey and say, when you pull the lorries, do you make the engine noises as it's driving? But actually, that's a pretty serious bit of kit there isn't it yeah and it's really rare because they've discontinued it so i've been looking everywhere for it amazon have like got one left and it's like 300 odd pattern is it really because they're you obviously making money on it. you think because you can get a market version off um banggood or something or aliexpress did have a quick look but i actually i was having a browse on ebay and uh that one came up and it was a lot, lot cheaper, and it's still sealed. So I was like, yeah, got to get it. So, And then, um, obviously, it doesn't come with a motor. It's got like a crank handle, because obviously the ride actually works. Um, so I went online and bought uh, a battery and a motor just to... And that, that, that works. So, yeah, I need to start that. It's been sat up there for a while. Yeah. You sure you haven't got enough to do, Horlicks? You know, what with all your Terminator 400 issue per episode? Yeah. And then us, that's only 300 episodes on that one, isn't it? Yeah. No, the, that Lego I'm going to do in my own time. Um, I won't be filming it because... I I actually think it's nice to have an off-camera project. Yeah. I've got an off-camera project going. Um, and it's just... I mean, for me, it's a model helicopter, but it's it just means that I can sit. I mean, I've got a lot to do, so I haven't done much on it for a while. But it's I, more relaxing, isn't it? I mean, hobbying yeah. is is a relaxing thing to do, and I, you know, it, I, I do it, love sharing it with yeah. everyone. Up here. You haven't got the pressure of putting the, the video out. Oh, I've got to do a yeah. video. Oh, I've only got six days till it goes live, and I haven't built it. Yeah. Um, it means that you can mess it all up if, you know, obviously I don't go out to mess projects up, but. I don't worry now if I mess it up. Um, mm. And it's just something totally different from what I've been doing. Yeah. So I do, I do like the idea of an off-screen project. And then, oh, man, the last thing about it, sorry, which I've never seen before on Lego, maybe it's just me, Yeah. it's actually glow-in-the-dark as well. Some of the bricks glow-in-the-dark. Right. So I've never yeah, seen that before. Questions for me. Is this, a, is there a, a lighting kit with it? Oh, like, can you buy a lighting kit? And question two is, could you make a lighting kit for it? I think you can get a lighting kit, but I'm not sure because it's a ride and it, it moves and spins. So yeah. you'd probably have to get some sort of... Um, slip, slip thingy? Slip, slip ring, ring, whatever it is. Slip thing. Oh, I can never say it right. We had that with the Aurora, with the Aurora, didn't we? But yeah, you might be able to, but I'll have to have a look. Yeah. Anyway, uh, where were we? Off subject there a bit. Uh, I think we're um, Mandy M saying thanks for the info, guys. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, Mandy M. Thanks for the info. Successfully put us off Route Master by talking about um, um, by talking about Lego. Mm. And Chris Campion said getting it. Yeah, Get them, what the, your Ecto one, or have you seen? I, I, that would, no, when... I would expect no less from Chris because I know he does some good Lego videos on his um on his channel. Yeah, uh, we've got David Bassett. Good evening, Penny and Horlicks. Looking forward to the model equivalent of uh, Ordnance Works with the next installment of the Root Master build. Well, I, I think that that's probably the highest compliment anyone can pay us on the Root Master build, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much, David. Uh, nice to see you. Um, uh, Pam, did, did Love Minnie's Dentist bring, bring his track... Oh, did Love Minnie's Dentist bring his traction engine? I don't know if that's a joke. If it's not, if it is a joke, I don't get it. And I apologise for not getting it. You get as bad. I'm just as bad. No, I it could just be. It might. I might be looking at a joke that isn't there, or it might be a joke that I don't get it. And and I apologise. I don't get everything. You know, I yeah. do try to, but 
Uh, we've got Chris Daly as well. Hi, all. Ooh, How's you all? Rare visit from Chris or a rare comment from Chris. How are you? Hi, uh, hi Chris. Uh, we've got Jordy Dave. Uh, evening, okay. everyone. Hello from up northeast. Northeast, north, definitely north. Anyway, you're more northern than me. Anyway. Uh, Matthew Borum, evening all. Looking forward to Christmas 2021. Now, is that the Christmas next year? Because a lot of people think this year is 2021, don't they? Because New Year is 2021. And then, but it's like, uh, if you ask someone how long between Christmas and New Year in the same year, the actual answer is 51 weeks. Because New Year comes before Christmas. If that makes sense. Yeah. But people think Christmas and New Year is a week apart, but it's actually the old Christmas and the new New Year or something like that anyway. That's confusing, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Pam, by, uh, even if you got plenty of solvents, I would still recommend you get a Met pack paintbrush as a lot easier applying solvent with that. I, I will definitely look into that. Um, but for me, if I went out and bought everything I needed every week, then I would have no money. So I do have to prioritize. Um, so I will, I promise you, I will look at it. Um, and do they do smaller quantities to try out? Um, but saying that, it's cheaper. So it's just I don't want to spend £27 on something that I don't get on with. Um, although it sounds like I will get on with it. Yeah. So. Uh, Chris Davies World, good thanks. Good, good. So, okay. Uh, we've got Matthew Borum uh, next year. Next year, right. Okay. So, we're all hoping next Christmas is, is going to be better than this coming Christmas. Well, yeah. I mean, by all accounts, this Christmas is cancelled. So, well, I mean, it depends what you think of Christmas, really. If you think Christmas is going out and seeing people, then. Yeah, Christmas is cancelled. Um, uh, um, so yeah, sorry. Um, so, but if Christmas is is having a nice time and thinking of other people, then Christmas isn't cancelled. So, right um, as we speak, I am getting the parts out, and I am so happy because. My lovely little parts holder here, my little where I store all my parts ready to be built, it's getting overloaded. Because this is um, issue 199. Uh, issue 101, whoa, is smaller, but it still obviously takes up space. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah. So David Bassett has very kindly explained um, Pam Bailey's joke. And I know, oh, sorry, it's not Pam. It's, um, I keep forgetting your name. Um, but yeah, I think it was extraction engine. Now I get the joke. Dentist extraction engine. Yeah. <laughs> we do get a lot of jokes on this channel. We don't necessarily get good jokes, but we do get a lot of jokes. So, right, so I'm chucking my, all of my parts on my table because I can, because it's big. I've cleared up today on my desk. Um, I've got a couple of new drawers. So I keep, I've got to, I've got to rephrase that, haven't I? Yeah. I've got a new set of drawers. Four new <laughs> set. <clears throat> you got to put yourself to some new drawers now again, haven't you? I have. I will show you them later because I think they're brilliant. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, so okay. I am ready when you are. I've got a horrible feeling I may have just dropped some screws, but we'll, this is why we do a parts check. Um, so, so I'm just getting the lid off. I'll tell you what, these containers are extremely handy for me um, because I'm doing a lot of things where we need um, to glue things. And um, they make really, really good. Cut them up into smaller bits. And they're really good for putting uh, uh, glue on. So, right. So, from what I gather, this is essentially going to be the same as uh, last week. Except that we are actually going to attach last week's part. Obviously, this is a slightly different shape. 
Um, but we're then going to attach it to last week's piece. Yes, so this week is the framework and windows for the lower deck. Uh, another section of the lower deck framework is supplied and fitted with windows. So, no. part A, 99A, yep. is the left wall framework. Lovely. So, just like the corresponding part from last week, this is a metal part. Beautiful. Um, absolutely lovely. It's not that heavy compared to the size. It is heavy. But it's not that heavy because it's got like these little little cutout bits, which so just obviously reduces the weight a bit. Um, but that's that part. So you can clearly see roughly where that's going to go, can't you? Yeah. Um, it's either going to go on the front, um, on sorry, at the front on the off side or at the rear on the near side because you've got this wheel arch. So... Right, I'm just putting that to one side on the, just for the benefit of certain people. I put it on my little mat so it's not going to get scratched. So 99B is a window bar. Right, so here is my window bar. And what I'm going to do is, sorry, I'll tell you, I've got to move you. I'm going to pop it into my little parts box for the root master because I know for a fact we're not going to install it today. Um, because we're going to get all that done in issue 103, which we'll explain later. Okay. Uh, C is a winder. So, again, this is the window winder. But, again, that's going in the little box for safekeeping. Um, and that will go on in a future issue. Okay. D is the window frame. On one window frame. And it's got F1 on it. So I don't know if it's extra fast. Yeah. You know, I can't see it being designed for a Formula One car because it's not that aerodynamic. Unless you put it in like that, that's a bit more aerodynamic, isn't it? So, but that's uh, that's my little part. And then we've got E, which is a sliding window pane. Okay, so sliding window pane. And it's very hard to see because it's so see-through. I tell you what, um, Chris Davis has just mentioned about the optician, so I've got to do this. Better or worse? Better or worse? That's how they go, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay, so then we've got F, which is a window pane, which is the smaller of the two. The smaller of the two. So that's this one here. Lovely. And again, the same as the last issue, we have got these push stud marks, uh, ejector pin marks, but they're very carefully placed in an area that eventually you won't see them because this will be where the framework is quite well. I think they call that well engineered. Well engineered, yeah. Yeah. Okay. G is another window pane, but a large okay. one. Okay. So this is the same as before, but larger. Same as before, but different. And then you get a really nice reflection on my lamp. See if I can. Um, no. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a reflection on my camera. I think that bit there is my camera. Oh, no, yeah. 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 So, oh, there's my camera. It's very hard to see, but it's just a little slight reflection. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, then we go to screws. So you should have BP screws. BP uh, Yes. 1.3 no 1.5 by 3 mil and there's three of those definitely three in there okay uh op screws op screws uh, 1.7 by 5 mil and there's five there are definitely five in there and they're ops brilliant jp 2.3 by 4 mil and there's 12 right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Definitely twelve in there. Okay. Uh, okay. We've got EM screws, one point five by four mil, and there's five. Definitely five in there. They look quite skinny, actually. Okay. And then last of all, we've got some FM screws, two point three by four mil. There's eleven. Eleven famous FMs. Rootmaster FM, tune in next week. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so, 
Yeah, the, the parts. Because I've tidied my, my desk up a little bit, I've actually got so much space on here, I just don't know what to do with it. So I'm going to put, tell you what, this has been a bit worn out already. But it's quite interesting. I've got little lumps taken out from where I've been putting the parts down. And it is quite interesting that I know people go, oh, put something down so you don't scratch your parts. And you think, oh, that'll be all right. <clears throat> and if you think of like, I don't know if you can see it very well, but a little chunk's been taken out. So what would, what would if I kept, if I used this only for my Rootmaster, what would my Rootmaster parts look like if I didn't use that? So I don't know if that's yeah. interested. interesting. Um, well, actually, I've got a bit of a little quick update. Um, yeah. I've got my, because obviously I'm slightly ahead on the bus, I've, um, as uh, Dave <coughs> mentioned, I've got some uh, X7 red. I have some red. Oh, oh, that's a shame. I've got XF7. Yeah, I've got some X7. Yeah, X7 is the um, is the gloss red, isn't it? Yeah, and that's to do the um, because where I've been putting, starting putting the frame on the bus. Yeah, the screws were chipping, and so yeah, I've got this to after we put all the screws in, just to to um, touch up any screws. So is that a good colour match? Because it looks it looks okay, but paint tends to darken slightly when it dries. Um, I'm assuming XF7 is the same as X7, except that XF7 is matte and X7 I so. is... I mean, I'm just going by Dave Say, and you know what we, yeah. you know, he knows his stuff. And Well, yeah, I was going to say, you know my thoughts on Dave. Um, yeah. If Dave doesn't know, it's not worth knowing. Yeah, so, that's um, it. So he, he said that's the right one, and there was a lot of other other people on the stream that said the same. So Yeah, because originally we were talking about, I think it was a Humbrol colour, and I know that there's a very good colour if you do the Revel Route Master. Yeah. Um, but again, it's, you know, it's your taste, isn't it? You know, you can always mix it with a bit of something if it's too light or too dark. Yeah. So. Okay, so <clears throat> step one, uh, we need to fit the window pane 99G to the inside of the left wall framework 99A, uh, fixed in place with four EM screws. Okay, dokie. So um, what I'm doing is I'm holding it this way round because uh, I can identify these little two tabs there. And these holes there. If you have it the other way round, the tabs and the holes. Well, you could see it's not. It's not the right way round. Um, so it's this way round, and I think that's going to be the larger window. So this is the window, and I can see four screw holes there and there, there and there. You can't see them that well from there. Um, but there's the screw holes, mm -hmm. and I'm going to. Place the window that way. See if I like the fit. That's not bad. We'll try different other ways. Different other ways. Did I just make some kind of vocabulary up there? Uh, we shall try it in a variety of ways and see if there's... I don't think this really makes any difference which way around you place it. Um, so I'm going to stick with that way. Um, we want EM screws, and it says yeah. two, and then it says two. So I'm suggesting that maybe we just want to put the two screws in. Normally, I'll go one corner, opposite corner, and then the other two. I think I'm going to go top and then bottom. So one thing I've forgotten to do is get my screwdriver ready. So... I do apologise. Don't know if that's a. Oh, and that's why they give us a spare screw. I think we might not be okay with that one. So I think I'm going to have a little fiddle session finding the right screwdriver. But no, I think that's okay. Right. So first one's always the hardest. So go for the easiest. 
and I'm just going to give it a couple of screws, a couple of turns, so that that screwdriver is it. That screw is it. In fact, I think I'm going to use the little cardboard method again, where I wedge a little piece of um, cardboard underneath the screw head, and then once the screw, that once the cardboard stays in place. Let's see, yeah. Bear with me a sec, because the actual bit of cardboard I had last week isn't suitable. Oh. So let's just get that squared off a bit. So I'm just going to put a little bit of cardboard underneath the screw, like that. And then I'm just going to keep screwing gently. I say gently, but I know roughly where the end of the screw is. So as you can see there, that piece of cardboard is wedged in there. And I can still get the key. So I would say for now that card, that, that screw is in tight enough. So we'll do the same. At the moment, you see that that card isn't, it's not tight enough to hold the card. In fact, you might even have heard the window rattle when I shook it. There we go. So that piece of card is in fine. So then I'll do the same with the other two screws. I don't actually think that screw that those screws are tightened down quite enough, but that's fine. I'd rather have them um, not enough than too much because as we all know, and I know from firsthand experience, these windows crack extremely easily. So that's in tight enough. It's gone very quiet. We're just all listening for the cracks. Oh, I see. <laughs> no. Yeah. So what I'll do now is from the other side, <clears throat> I think that's a little bit loose on the top. So I'll give it about a quarter of a turn. Yeah, actually, that needs quite a bit more. Yeah. And this really is the fine tuning. Oh, do you know what? I think that's fine now. Right. Yeah. So even though I was getting that grip on that card, this top is actually quite loose. You can also kind of tell by the noise when you tap it. I don't know if you heard a rattling earlier. But now it's more of a tapping. So that window is not it's bending in the middle, but that's if any. Well, I don't know. I'm tempted to say it could do with a screw in the middle on this one. But would you really want to put six screws in there? You know, I'm on the edge of my seat enough just with the two screw uh, with four screws. Yeah. Right. So are you happy with that? Yeah, if you are. Um, yeah. Um, it's a shame, actually, when you put this in, you can't really see much difference, can you? Right. Normally, when you put a part in, it's like, yeah, that's made a big difference. This hasn't from your angle. From that angle, you can see the difference it's made. So, the step two is to cut, cut away the mouldings that we use <laughs> in the manufacturer from the sliding window pane, 99E, and the window frame. 99D. Smooth any rough edges. Right, so I have become I have come slightly ill prepared. Um as in I haven't got my um equipment ready. And it doesn't help that I've been rearranging 
drawers. So now everything I need is in a different drawer. Right. So, firstly, the window. What we need to do is cut this off. If you're not confident with your cutters, just run a little life along there. Just make it a little bit weaker. Um, I am confident, but if you just run a sharp blade along there, it will just decrease the chances. Of, if you go to cut it, it could go that way. It should do with this part. There we go. I just, as soon as I said that, I thought, oh, no, it's going to go, isn't it? And then we'll give that a very light sanding. Not Try not to remove too much, but use your finger and see how smooth it is. And just take that down till it's nice and smooth, which that part is. The same with this part. This part's got less chance of cracking because it's plastic. Well, it's it's a funny acrylic, isn't it? Now, these trimmers that I've got are very good, so they will cut quite close to the line. Um, but just file down what you need. Now, I have a feeling that this is going to be an ill fit again um, because this has got kind of a an expand. It's slightly bigger on this side than it is on that side, the way it kind of goes up. So I think that I am going to have to take a little bit off the edge. But I'm not going to take a little bit off the edge until we actually come to fit it. Okay. For obvious reasons. Okay, so step three then is to fit the sliding window pane 99E into the window frame 99D so that the ridges on the ends of part 99E fit into the grooves in the frame uh, 99D. The metal edge of the sliding window goes at the top. And right. Uh, we've got a few of these, so that's... Uh... Yeah. So what I'm looking for in particular is these little holes there. They want to be upwards, and that gives you the same orientation as the magazine. And then we know it's the right way around. You've got some little channels on the inside there. We've got our window... We've got the, uh, the the silver side up, which is the metal bit. It's not metal, but it's painted. And then you've got these runners there. Now, if you can pop something in there and it grips, then you know that's upside down. So we'll turn it over. And you can see back there it's smooth. And that will just pop into those little runners are there. And that's stage three complete. Cool. Okay, so then moving on to step four, you are going to fit the window frame 99D with the siding window pane 99E onto the outside of the left wall framework 99A. Fit the window pane 99F to the inside of the framework as shown, and then fix in place from the inside of the window pane 99F with four OP screws. Right, so I'm guessing the OP screws are the same as the, no, they won't be the same as the EMs. Right, so that wants to go into there, and it looks like I was wrong. That is actually a pretty good fit, straight in, look. I can't believe that. That is, see how good a fit that is so it looks like i have the confidence to place that down and insert the screws from there so we need four op screws and they, they've just put four individual op screws so i'm guessing we can install these any any order that we want right so but again be very careful because we are talking about acrylic. So the screws in question, and that bit is way too small for those screws. Because we've got, it looks like we've got three places we can put screws. And if you can see those screw holes there, we actually want this lower one and the, and the bottom one. So I'm going to pop this bottom corner in first. And that's just enough to bite. 
and then I'm going to go for the opposite corner and I'm just double checking the magazine yes I'm confident that that's the one I can pop this one in just enough to bite and then I want to flip it over and make sure the part is still lined up correctly which I think it is and then I'll flip it back I think stages like this is all about checking and double checking and possibly trip can you really check too many times do you think no, I don't. you've got to be careful that the screw doesn't start to come through the other side of the plastic frame. Yes. No. Exactly. I think um, I think really the answer to the question, can you check too much? The answer to that really is how good a model do you want? Right. So I'm going to place my finger behind it. So if it does, I don't like that screwdriver bit. It's a case of one feels too big and one feels too small and there seems to be no middle ground with it yeah that's yeah that's not even touch i wonder if i've got the wrong bits muddled up Okay, sorry guys, I do apologize. I can't seem to find a screwdriver bit that grips well. well that's what I had, and I then that's when Mark introduced me to the wearers, and now I absolutely love them. Okay, that is actually too long. Right, by putting my finger behind, I could feel that starting to come through. So that is actually way too long. Look at that. Ah, actually, have you put the window in? No. Damn. I missed that. Yeah. Now I feel silly. Right, that would explain why they are way too long. But that's good, though, because at least you've had your finger there, so you knew. Yes. That there was a problem if you didn't do that it probably would have gone straight through it yes and i did that before didn't i, I went screw 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 oh it's popped out the other side and because this is a an acrylic like plastic which means it will crack rather than break if it was ordinary plastic it would just poke through right so apologies guys for my incompetence there so we have the screw the the window there now that i'm not happy with the placement because if you see there you've got the push pin marks ejector pin marks and they're visible so what i'm going to do is i'm going to flip that over and now all of the ejector pin marks are hidden by the framework yeah so, so I've got to go through all that again, lining everything up, making sure the fit is good. And so just to double check, yeah. So I may, now this has decided it's not going to hold in very well. Do you know what? I've just had an idea. Bear with me, guys. Now that's gone in. I'm not as yeah, it's now decided it's not staying in. So I'm gonna pull out a little dirty trick if I can find what I'm looking for. Did I ever tell you about the um the U2 themed sat nav that I bought? No. It's absolutely terrible. The streets had no name, and I'm st I still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, right, so I'm going to get a bit of masking tape. This is obviously an optional part. Oh, meal masking tape. Pardon? 
A mini mask in tape. Well, I've got all different sizes. This is this is fat tape, right? So I don't actually want that one taped on that much. Yeah, this is this is my fat masking tape. And this, you love this, Holix. This is my mini masking tape. Oh wow. And good, isn't it? But what was funny was um I bought some masking tape and it came in a double pack, or it's either a double or a triple pack. And I didn't read I didn't read the instructions properly. Um which I nothing unusual there, is there? And um, it, I, I thought it was a single pack. So I ordered like three packs. And of course, I've ordered like three triple packs. But to be honest with you, I'm getting through it like there's no tomorrow. So things like the, um, the cabinets that I'm making, when I glue them up, I, uh, I masking tape the corners just to hold them down until the glue dries. Mm hmm and it's, i find that's really good now this window seems to want to be pointing uh, pulling up as i screw it down i don't know why it suddenly decided to do that um but obviously a little bit of care and caution needed and again if you uh, hear a crack you know it's gone a bit too much if it's pulling up it could be a sign that's not been placed in properly so I think that's in okay actually. Yeah, okay. Okay, I don't know why that pulled up like that, but it's it seems to be fine now. So maybe as I put that second screw in, maybe it did just slip in properly. Right, so that's in enough to bite, and that's obviously an area of concern, so I'll tackle that screw first when I come to do them again. There we go. Right, so finger behind, and I'm, I'm actually looking at this one because I can't... Yeah, I'm doing this one by feel, feel and sight. And obviously with my finger behind. But if you kind of push the window into place with your thumb. I know so if you know if you can see that I've got Yeah, obviously those screws are quite long. So I noticed with mine, my screws didn't even go flush to the window. Yeah, but what I'm doing is I've got the finger behind to feel for any screw that comes through. And then with my thumbnail, I'm pushing down the window to try and keep it flat. And, and I'm feeling the window. I'm feeling for any, any movement. And I would say that that's in about the same as this window. Like that. So I'm really happy with that. It's going to need a bit of a clean because I've been touching it so much. Um, but I'm happy with that window because... That window is can be pushed into any position I want it. So that I will take advantage of that. If it does hold, then I will put it in a partly open position. And I quite like that crookedness, to be honest with you. Because I seem to remember the windows. When you wound them, they kind of went like that, didn't they? <coughs> Not this smooth yeah. action that you get with modern buses. Which doesn't work anyway because they're all useless. So, are you happy with that issue, uh, with that stage? Sorry. Yes. Um, and don't please don't think we've forgotten about the comments. We will catch up with them at some point. Promise you. So, you want to move on to the next stage? Sorry, yeah, I was just seeing a message. Um, so, 
Step five is to fix the upper part of the window frame 99D to the framework 99A from the inside with two VP screws. Makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it? Because um, I did spot six screw holes, but we only put four screws in. So obviously this BP stage, it now makes sense. And these are obviously just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, these are very thin screws, so they're just probably there just to, just to stop the end from flapping. End flappy stoppy screws, is that such a thing? And <laughs> end flappy stoppy screw. Stick around and you'll learn new words, guys. That's what we do. I've already taught P40F20 the word um, glue squidge. And even though I do know the correct term for it, I just think it's much better to call it glue squidge. It's when you place two pieces together, you glue two pieces together as you as you clamp them, the glue squidges out of the sides. I know it's the technical term is actually squeeze out, but I think glue squid. Oops, as I screwed that in, the um, the panel tried to pop. Yeah, I think glue squidge is is much better. Right, okay, so I can feel that frame going in as I tighten it. So that I am really happy with. And that's tightened that window up as well, which is even better. So now that will definitely stay wherever I put it. So I'm really happy with that. Don't know if you are. You might not be. You might think that's a terrible build compared to mine, but... Okay, so you happy with that stage? Yes, I am. Lovely. Yeah. So while you read out stage six, I will just run and get last week's part. Okay, so six is to turn the window frame 99A over and take the left wall 98A from the previous issue, align the two parts so that the three tabs on part 99A fit over the corresponding screw sockets, in part 98a fixed together with three fm screws the image below sorry the, yeah the image below shows the parts fitted together okay so this is the part from last week and i know it's from last week because as you see i've put number on there on the thing on on the thingy that's another technical term the thing um, so there's my, I did get worried about this because I thought I can't find the window winder. And of course, I didn't put it in the box. Don't put things in proper places. You, you can't find them. Uh, right, I'm just going to interrupt this transmission for an important announcement. We have a, another another guest. Mr. Stevo, how are you? Hiya, you all right? Hiya. Hiya, you all right? For, for a bit of a break, um, okay. we're coming up to st here, stage six of issue 99. We okay. had a little bit of an issue in that I kind of forgot to put the window in that I was screwing in. You know, the right. part where you screw the window in? Right, and yeah. Kind of critical to put the window in, but we missed that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I did announce that we were going to have a guest, but obviously you were running late or something. Yeah, I've been, uh, been taking temporary girlfriends for, for a yeah. scan at the hospital. So, um, yeah, we're back again now. So, yeah. all ready to go. So, so, you're doing is it 99 and 100 today, is 99 it? 99 and 100. And, and the reason I've asked you to come along is I understand you've got a little bit of a change to the door, which will mm. make it a hell of a lot easier when we come to put the driver in. Which um, hopefully will make your destination work as well oh fantastic i'm all for making my destination work because i believe your, your your cog's not not connected isn't it yeah at the moment. It, it did work at first and then it suddenly stopped working yeah so yeah. uh I'll, I'll tell i mean obviously it's it just it's just basically you've got you've got to remove the cab roof and just do a little bit of filing on the um, two uh, mounting points. Oh, lovely. Which, 
which which will bring which will bring your cab roof slightly up, which will hopefully bring your cog up, but then makes you do your door loose. So you've got to, and then, and that's how you can get the that mine you can get the door off off and on. It still okay. slides on the side though. Yeah, a really simple mod then, if we can yeah. even a mod. Yeah, it should be a, a simple a simple needle file because it's it's not much. You don't take much off because then your your door will completely fall out. You've only, right. only okay. a, a very small amount. But yeah, yeah. Right. So usual thing then. I'm I'm afraid I'm going to end up shoving you to the background. Okay. Uh, yeah. No problem. There, but yeah, obviously you've built enough of these to know how we work. <laughs> um, so um, <laughs> yeah. So what we are, just a quick recap, what we're going to be doing then on this stage is we're going to be taking this part from last week, um, and I believe the connection points are here, and I'm going to place that onto my lovely mat, and then the part that we've just done this week needs to go over, and the connection points are there. Is it just three connection? Yes, yeah, three connection yeah, points. That's right. That's not difficult, is it? Oh, having said that. Oh, fitment issues here. Right. Okay, I've got a bit of a problem there. That's the point where it doesn't seem to want to go in. I'll try a bit of jigglery, pokery, whatever you want to call it. If you want me to, if you want me to butt in, you might have to do a bit of filing the paint away. Yes, um, I've got a feeling that the file's going to come out, but I'm going to see if I can do without the filing. Um, but I don't want to. Oh, there we go. It's gone in. There we go. That was what I was trying to get at. I I don't mind if I have to do that because it then means it's going to be a tight fit. Um, but then again, if you file something properly. That should also be a tight fit, shouldn't it? Yeah. When you go in it, if you go in with a file like a bull in a china shop, um, you're going to end up with big gaps. So, three FM screws. I see we've still got a few more to go. Yeah. Um, and right, I'm going to put that middle one in first then. Right, and that's almost in fully. These are metal screws, um, so that you want to put them in quite tight. Are you all right with that, you guys? Yeah, I put mine in really tight. Yeah. When, I thought, do... when I thought so, they were tight, they, hit, they were going in even more. Yeah. If you, um, if you find them a bit of a struggle to screw them in, you can always pop a little bit of oil on these some three-in-one oil because they are metal screws and if you are concerned about them falling out you can also put a little bit of let me see if i've got this right it's um um i keep forgetting what it's called now um damn what's that stuff called threadlock who threadlock Threadlock, that's it. Yeah, I actually the, the name just escaped me. Um, and I believe Threadlock works like an oil, but once it dries, it kind of lightly glues the screw. And I think that's the best way to describe it. But it doesn't glue them in so much that they're impossible to get out. Right, so I am trying to support this with my hand behind. I don't want to damage the part. And, yeah, I'm not quite happy with that because I've got a little bit of movement there. So I'm going to just see if I can get more, a bit more on there. And I think in order to do that, I think I'm going to employ a different screwdriver. Um, this is my Harley Davidson screwdriver. Um, it's strange, yeah. isn't it? Because right at the beginning, that Oreo was like, oh, my God, we've got extra turns on that. And now it's we're having to turn to other ones as well. Yeah. I think for me, it's, um, it's 
the same reason for the like i don't get on with the wearer because the handles to look at that that went in quite a lot the handle's a little bit too delicate and i can't get i can't get a tough screw in with it um it's just it doesn't seem to work with my hand um but this i was to be honest with you i was looking more at the uh the handle shape than i was the end yeah. um, you see i can get a little bit of a better grip on that one um but it has got a rather large head so this isn't really oh look at that look at that wow i see exactly what you mean now horlix i got them in as tight as i could and then all of a sudden i get about another three turns out of it i think it hits a, a tough point and then suddenly it gets through it and then there's about another two turns left on it so one last attempt at these yeah i don't think they can go any tighter and there is definitely no movement I mean, it's not going to be the end of the world, I don't think, if there's movement there, is there? Because once they're bolted to the bus, yeah, they're not going anywhere. But obviously, the tighter these are, the little bit more support it's going to give. So, so I'm at the, the point now I'm going to have to... That is the final view. Oh, sorry, bear with me a sec. I'm just stealing the view. So that's my view. And that's that view. Let me turn. Oh, that is the correct way. So, I don't know about you, but I can't tell the difference between the two. Can you? Yours has got windows in. <laughs> yeah. But, no, yeah, very good. So this is the, because um, that's the driver's handle, isn't it? No. No, it's the near side, isn't it? That's, that's where he, he grabs old off to go and do his root box. Oh, of course he does. Yes, yes, yes. So the front wheel is that way, isn't it? It is, yeah. And this is the rear wheel. Right. So I have just been I've been informed that you can actually carry on with this issue and complete this issue. Can I? Yes. So if that's okay. what you want to do, we can do that. Does that mean I've got to go all the way to my shelf and get the rest of my bus then? You may have to if you want to. Okay. Yeah, it'll. We can complete this issue. Okie dokie. Um, would you like to leave for the one hundred and three? Because we have probably more time for one hundred and three, um, and it's going to give us uh, more time to, to look at this door. Would everyone be okay to, with that? yeah it's up to you um, yeah and then we can basically the, the start of issue 103 is is pretty much going to be this is all about the framework yeah i mean i i did leave mine but yeah after now after looking at it i mean adrian messaged me so that we could do it and i didn't understand to start with because i thought that the bottom frame actually connected to the top frame and the top frame needs to be in but it's, it doesn't actually it just it slots in so it doesn't have to yeah it's not like that so yeah but no that's fine if you want to wait then we wait. yeah i think we'll get it all done and then that way this week i also don't have to probably won't have to get the whole bus down um do you want to stop for a comment break obviously it means more work for you but okay i, mean, I can then sit here eating chocolate while you catch up with all the comments Okay, let's see where we were at. So, I think we're up to Chris Davis World saying good thanks. Yeah, eight twenty three, oh, nearly an hour ago. Yeah. Well, it's a so, Pam Bailey. Uh, if did not, then he was not the president of the Model Railway Club. Professor Tim Watson, who is the chief dentist at Guy's W Hospital, who trains all the UK dentists. Ah, so there you go, a man of many talents. 
So we've got the president of the model club and the dentist. Can't be bad, can it? Oh, we've got so David Bradley. When you're holding up your pride and joy, a new train you've just made, is he looking at your train or is he looking at your teeth? <laughs> no, you just not no, no, would you? Um, oh, we had this one, yeah. David Bassett said, think it was extraction engine, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Matthew Borum, uh, lockdown extended beyond December the 2nd. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a little bit selfish, I'm okay with that because um, the more people I'm able to work, the more work I get because I'm an agency driver. So the more the more insecure it gets with COVID, the more secure my work is. So um, I know that's pretty selfish, but. Oh. Oh. That's all right. Um, you know, I had issues with my light. Yes. It's dead now. It's blown up completely. Oh, it was It was telling you it was on the way out, was it? So I'm going to have to order one quick sharp for my show. Oh, so you now, are you now like a mushroom, kept in the dark? Yeah. Uh, right, anyway. Um, Matthew Bormos, right, he said uh, he might order Spitfire issues one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Two, three, Sorry, four. one, two, three, four, yeah. six, and seven. It's that to fix an issue. That's to fix your propeller, isn't it? I remember you saying in another stream that you got a broken propeller, and I think it was Dave Say said, from the way it sounds, it was broken. You're not going to be able to replace it. Um, I I had one with um, uh, with broken cogs, and it's quite interesting because. The cog had stripped there because they're only plastic cogs, which I, I'm not happy with that. Um, but I'd actually glued the uh, propellers in so they won't move sideways. They only go round and round. And then I bought another issue and I kept the propeller. I thought if I can't get an issue, then I'll use the one I've glued. Got this new issue for like a pound or something off eBay. Put it in, twisted the uh, propellers a couple of times, stripped strip the cogs again. So, um, but yeah, so that's, that's how it is. I wish I could do like metal 3D printing and I could scan and copy that, that cog and reprint it. But I don't think being, you know, twisting, what, what do you call it when they twist on the spot? Not going round, but they actually twist. Um, but the fact that it can't do that, I don't think that's the end of the world, is it? But if your propeller's actually snapped off, there's not an awful lot you can do about that. No. So. Okay, so Chris Davies World says uh, that he's had a call from the opticians and his new glasses are ready. Um, he would pick them up Friday, but they're close to getting them on Monday. Lovely. So if you had a change of prescription, can you now see better? Or did you get the glasses with like a fake eye on it? Or maybe the springs? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because that would be that would look great on stream, wouldn't it? That's one way of getting your viewers up if your eyes were on springs. Let's just yeah. get a closer look at that, guys. Mm. <laughs> uh, Chris uh, also says this has been the hardest and toughest year for everyone for the circumstances. Yeah, all I'll say on that is what a year to start a business. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, David Bassett says, just be careful with those acrylic windows and frames, those OP screws. Yes, I did watch. I did see your comment. Um, I didn't respond to it, but I did see it. And, I mean, I would have put my finger behind the frame anyway, but I would definitely, if I hadn't thought of that, then your comment would have made me do that. <clears throat> uh, Pam Bailey says that the showman's engine is live steam. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Borum says uh, he needs new glasses with larger magnifications. Uh, Chris Davies, uh, with all the wind, with all the winders there, you can wind the bobbin. Yeah. Uh, Pam yeah. Bates yeah. says <laughs> uh, Tower at Caxton Hall in Westminster. Uh, how uh, Pame says he had two two saying no's 
Sorry, I can't. He no, had two very um, notes that String was... Yeah, he, he actually has dyslexia. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, the way the words come out, sometimes we need to just think about it for a minute. But, you know, it's a case of we just be a little bit patient. And um, obviously, he's doing his best, and we can't stand for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that one. But um, And then Pam says, third method of propulsion. Uh, if you used string, you had to tell your friends uh, how you did the first forms being clockwork and electric. Right. Okay. And uh, Pam says, he also <laughs> said, if you could insult your friends, you could not insult anyone. I think that should read, if you can insult your friends, you can insult anyone. Possibly. That makes more sense anyway. Uh, Stephen Hyson, I've built my bus as per the magazine up to 103. Should I preserve and try to fit the roof or would you dismantle the sides before fitting the roof? Um, I mean, I was recommended to do that and I'm glad I did do that because it was hard enough trying to get them in without the sights on, mm -hmm. um, let alone trying to do it through the window. But, yeah, it's up to you at the end of the day. Uh, but it, I think it will make it a lot, lot easier for you um, if you took the sides off again. I mean, at um, the end of the day, it's the final result you're looking for. How, it, how you get there is is up to you. If you want to do it... Exactly. Out, 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 out. I mean, I think it'll probably be doable with the right tools. Mm. You might need extra long tweezers, and you it might take you another hour or two hours to get them in place. But at the end of the day, it's it's your hobby. So if you you know if you want to start sit there for two three hours, yeah, then it's perfectly fine. Obviously, so um, obviously because I'm doing it live on on the show, I needed to do it as quickly as possible, but without you know, rushing, of course. Yeah, without rushing and taking. So I was like, um, so I did it, and it made things easier, made things flow a lot easier. Otherwise, the stream not from putting the framework on and the window wide no. things. I think if I was doing it off stream or not on YouTube, I would probably have just done it how the magazine said and struggled with it. Um, but because you've got other builders, yeah, all share their experiences, and then you get to. Yeah, you know, the beauty of it is you've got a lot of people giving advice. Not all of the advice, uh, advice is necessarily exactly the same, but it is only advice. It's not instruction. It's not law. It's I found it easier to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. If you get three or four people telling you how they did it, you've now got a set of options in front of you. I mean, I, I did mine where I actually built the framework, everything, and then I actually built me roof in separate pieces all the way along right so you know when you, you you know the plastic in a in a in a roof so you yeah. fit the front bit in first fasten it to the sides then you put your poles yeah. right you can put your poles in and you move along to eventually oh, you're, work, you're working out the emergency exit oh yeah i really like that because at each stage you've got room to just tuck in and, and get your Wow, and then yes. That's what so I, I did. I mean, I built, I built, yeah. built the whole frame so you up. Dismantle, you dismantle your roof and then I reassemble put, it. Correct. Yeah. It's got to be easier than reassemble, uh, dis disassembling the sides. And then, is, and then once you've got the roof on, you can put your lights on and then you fit that red, the red frame on top of every. Oh, it's all built then, isn't it? So you, yeah. So you work at the front, and then if you want to be crafty, I did your know, little posters. You put your first one, you put you put your first part in, then stick half the poster on the first pod. Then when you put the next roof panel in, you can smooth the sticker over, so oh. it, so it, you, you you don't get all your posters all like in you know like big gaps everywhere. Yeah, well, that's what I did. I actually I did I built the first court. I, I put the first plastic piece in first. So you can put the handrails in, then built the yeah. second bit in, and basically work yeah. towards the back of the bus. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
So if, the if anybody part, yeah. is wondering why on earth we've invited Steve-O onto the show, there, there is no doubt anymore, is there? So you've got different uh, ways. You have got different ways. It's just... Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously for you, Penny, you, I mean, you, I think you've only put your frame on with one or two screws securing it on, so it's not well, really... I've, I've got to be honest with you. If, if Steve had told me that three or four weeks ago, I would probably then go, right, fine, I'm putting the sides of my bus on, mm. and I'm, I think that sounds a really good way of doing it. And I, I think if, I, if I'd have thought of that or known that before... I think the sides of my bus would already be on, and then I would just because the, the, the roof isn't fixed yet. No, and surely it's got to be easier just to either miss that top bit out or dismantle the roof rather than having to take all of because obviously, when you built it, you were getting one issue a week and you right. didn't know what was coming up. And, and it, yeah, it was an idea, it was someone on Facebook what said, I've done. I, have you tried dismantling the plastic roof and then yeah. start section by section and then but work backwards? So, yeah. was, so you put the, you, there was no tweezers, there's nothing. Your frame was well, all built. Room to get your hand in there. You know, yeah. even if you've got really fat hands, there's plenty of room there. That was yeah, right. Yeah, brilliant. So that might be another answer for... Um, um, but, 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 Steve Hyson, yeah. yeah. So that's another one to think about, Steve. So yeah, there's a couple of options there then. Uh, yeah. If you if you want to do uh, do any of them, but yeah, no, it's up it's up to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I you know, could do it, but it just would be a bit more awkward. I mean, trying to get anything through them windows, and then you've got the risk of slipping or or breaking a window while you're doing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a few ideas. Uh, so Build Radio says you can complete issue 99 from the beginning all the way to the end, which is obviously I didn't realise that. So yeah, <laughs> but obviously you've decided to do that later on. Matthew Bottom says also, he also needs to order X-Wing issues 1 and 18. Plus a... a, a sh what's that? Shawadi Wadi. A Shawadi yeah. Wadi CD it's for my girlfriend. I'm double D's know about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, youngsters. But I can just see that. Yeah, I need an issue one of the X Wing and then issue 18. Oh, and a Shawadi Wadi CD. <laughs> um, that was uh, in reference to the comment earlier. Could not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, P40F20 here in here in the US, the term is scree screege. Screech. 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 Yeah, Screech. that's about the glue squidge, glue squeege. Um, but you know, you say aluminum, I say aluminium, let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> potato, tomato, potato, potato. Uh, Peter Reynolds says, Good evening, Steve. Hi. <laughs> Uh, David Bassett, good evening, Steve. -O. Uh, like your case full of model buses behind you. Oh, yes, I can. I can we, all love, we all love the buses behind, don't we? <laughs> I've, I've got to find his address and I can uh, and then find out when you're working, right? And then come, in, come in with some sausages for the for the dogs and then a big bag for all of those buses. Oh, yeah, they're, all, they're all the Boris Moss. They're all the Boris ones. I, I, I do like the... I've got every Boris model. And you can see up there, I've got the Penny's model up there, what, the, the, the last present. See, I, got, if I would have known that, I would have got you a Boris bus. But then again, that would right. also put me off getting you a Boris bus, because if you've got them all, what are the chances? Well, you know, all the corgi ones, and then you're... The, then I've got, if you can, me, me wire will go that much. It's, it's just getting, that's Dave Say's model there. What's, uh, and then I've got a few like, Root Master and a Wing Corporation. The box. <laughs> yeah, so I've got two boxes on the wall. And then it's obviously, that's a reboot. That's what <coughs> I, use, I usually drive, that type of bus. Yeah. E 400. Then these are the other. This, this, there's an A model and a B model. So I've got right. the A's. And then I've got the small ones. 
and they've got the kind of, they've still got the it's there's got the Z, is it Z gauge and there's what there's got the ones what's done by Tiny. But yeah, I've just uh just redesigned my room sort of thing, sort of. I like the uh the one next to the white one. The poppy one. Yeah, it's what I've got multicolored on it. The um like the pride, pride. one, is it pride? Yeah, the pride one. Ah, mm. See, now I've got to admit, I didn't spot that one because the white one kind of drew my attention in. Yeah, we've got, got the Poppy, Coca-Cola, and the Pride, and another Coca-Cola, and they did a silver one. And the, and the uh, recognisable from a long distance stagecoach one there. I was just about to say, stagecoach. And, uh, is, that the, um, is that the Megabus Gold as a stagecoach? Yeah, gold? I, I, the, the bottom one is... I, I I did I did nine months with Stagecoach and I left them because they, they, they didn't look after the staff at the, the, the depot I was yeah, working. Out of Stagecoach. Um, but that was a, the new the newest vehicle I ever drove and I did like them. They were really nice yeah. buses. And then I got the gold ones because I missed out on the other gold ones and I just thought that it's a lovely livery and obviously they're changing the livery again. But yeah. they half go for some money in, in the second hand market. Really, once they've been released, um, give it a couple of years. The, some of the early ones now are going for twice as much because, yeah, you know, they're really expensive. So I thought I'm, oh. I'm, I'm trying to get hold of one of the uh, the Route 30 Newport bus, um, right? To, it's, a, it's an anniversary one or something, but right? You're lucky to get them for less than 40 quid, yeah. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, a 1 to 96 scale bus for 40 quid, I think that's a little bit much. Mm. You know, you can get some sun stars for that one, can't you? And I'm redesigning everything now, so this is this is where all my modelling space oh. is now. Wow. This is a big, mass, big, massive table. Yeah, a lovely little area. Yeah, yeah, and then there's obviously, I've got, I've got a telly and satellite, I can watch, you can watch you telly while I'm modelling. Yeah. Yeah, so I've just yeah, made that's that. Of wine as well, I can see that. Yeah. There's Coca Cola, but it's the. Oh, Coca Cola in the glass. And that's the latest one I'm making at the moment. That's lockdown project number two. So that's the wheels and the windows all done. And the bus is all ready. It's got wires in for the lights and stuff. So there is, there is, there is life after Route Master. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm. Um. Okay. Um, right, so Dano Build says, uh, hi, Steve-o. Uh, and Stephen Hyson. Uh, hi, Steve-o. Hello. The camera uh, we've got Sat... So, oh, I can't pronounce that. Sat I think Sat it's Setters Models. Um, no, this lovely chap, he's got um, some nice decal sheets for the uh, Ecto-1. Um, now, I'm actually buying some decal paper for a different project, but I'm buying like 20 sheets. Um, so I'm going to give his little decal sheet a go. Um, I've never done decals. I've just read online how to do it. Apparently, you just buy this paper, you print it off. You spray this stuff over the top if you use an inkjet printer. You leave it to the first instructions we read. It said that you bake it in the oven for, or when you've applied the decal, you bake it in the oven for 15 minutes at 100 degrees. Now, <coughs> the project that I'm working on is a Spitfire wing. You think I'm going to put a plastic Spitfire wing in the oven at 100 degrees for 15 minutes? No, I think I'll. Be I think I'll just take the leave for one to three days option. <laughs> yeah, you just print it. You just print the transfer paper, don't you? And then you, yeah, you see it. It's just something I've never done before. Um, and I, until I've actually done it, it looks easy. But until I've actually done it, I really don't know how easy it is. So, but I know he does some um, uh, some nice, really nice looking decals for the for the Ecto. Uh, you can print it off on sticker paper. Um, which in this case might be better because obviously with it being thicker, it would make it look like a plate. But in some mm -hmm. cases, decals are better. Sometimes stickers are better. 
Um, but yeah, it gives options then, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Dave's hobbies. Uh, hi, Steve. Oh, good to see you. Hi. Uh, Pam Ailey. Hi, Steve. Oh. Um, Lovely says yes. The door. Oh, that was in regards to getting the door done. Um, yeah. Initial hundred. Mark Smart says uh, uh, he, he loves Penny's T-shirt. Thank you. I do love T-shirts that combine two things. So, um, yeah. Are they the, is that one of the ones you're getting from the T-shirt club thing? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. I think I've had this a couple of months, but I've, I've got a few good ones um, and some... But what you do is you can if you if you order a certain level, you can I think I ordered two, it's either two or three t-shirts, and you get to actually pick one t-shirt. Um, yeah. but you tick little sections what kind of t-shirt you're after. So you know the religious and the philosophical ones, I'm like, yeah, I'm not ticking that box. Funny, yeah, I'll tick that box. Um you know, so that's that's kind of what I'm about. I just, but I do love these little combo things, like obviously cars and Deadpool. I think I've seen that cars anyway to make couple. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, we've got. Sorry, I might not be able to pronounce this. Is it Dita Baldo? I think you've done a good job there. We'll soon find out in a minute. If you get an angry type, go, no, you have pronounced my name incorrectly. I do apologise if I have, but um, hello, so hello, uh, Tommy Tippy, uh, Tommy in Dublin, still need issue 80, stalled on my build since August 2019, have everything else and follow Penny and Horlicks from the start, can anyone help, best, wish best wishes to you all. If you know how to get a hold of me on Facebook, drop me a message, I have got a box of uh root masters and i do not know which issues i've got um and i'm happy to get rid of them um help people out um just cover the postage and the cost of the issue you can have it if i've got 80 ish, ish uh, 80 issue if i've got issue 80 it is yours lovely uh, david bassett says adjusting the pitch of the propeller penny Oh, the pitch. Of the oh, propellers. the pitch. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, about the uh, the twisting the propellers. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got P forty F twenty. Steve Hyson. It'd be much easier to remove the upper framework and then fit the upper deck ceiling. You will have a bad time trying to fit the grab poles in their sockets. So that was just in regards to when he was asking about. How we were going to do it? Uh, yeah, well, uh, basically, if he got to dismantle his whole whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Steve um, Tyson says, "Okay, people with twenty, thank you for the heads up." Uh, Love money says, "What's on Penny's t-shirt?" But let's uh, see, so we've we just said about that. Yeah. Carpool. Um, Steve Tyson says, "Some excellent choices for me. Thanks, everyone." Uh, David Bassett says, "Trevor Oaks, original member of Show." Show. I can't say yeah. that. Shawadi Wadi. So yeah, father of Stephen Oaks. Who played the Wickham Wanderers? So I don't um, have my team mentioned. Yeah. Ah, see, if you want to know anything really, really um obscure, but no, I don't mean that negatively. Um, David Bassett. Original okay. member of Body Wally Father of Stephen Oakes, who played for Wickham Wanderers. Yeah, I remember Stephen Oakes. I quite liked him, but I don't have a problem with any Wickham player, to be honest with you. Okay, so then David Bassett says, Great connection, Steve. I love your national. Yeah, thank you. Uh, love Mini says, Stephen Heisen, nice, nice place to work. And David Bassett says, I've bought some of Peter Curtin's. Uh, streamers and banners they look stunning uh, have the box fireworks lower rear poster and have both the red rover and green rover streamers lovely and then Pam says Dave's hobbies how much did Peter Curtin charge you for a four sheet of interior posters from his range 
And then, love me, is that Holly? Are you going to give out penny's pit stop a haircut like yours for free? No. <laughs> yeah, I could do. I've got my peppers on charge, so I'll see you in about an hour and a half. No. The door <laughs> is being bolted. You are not getting in. And then I can get the hoodie at the same time. Yeah, okay. Well, save me your, save me the a cost. Free, bitch. free haircut and... Uh, no. Right, okay, so moving on then. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Um so just before we just quickly before we move on, I'm just gonna go through the rest of the issue quick. So step seven is to obviously put the um the window winder on, uh, and then we would attach that to the bus. Uh and then it'll be a case of screwing this side frame on. Um the side of the box with various screws uh, and that would be this issue complete but as I say we're going to come back to this issue in 103 yeah. so uh, no. right so take it away maestro oh, I've lost the I've lost the files hang on, hang on. Uh, here we go bit of a technical hitch there but all good, all good, all good. There we go. So it's your hundred. So, so you're four old dogs, I can hear, um, Steve. Yep. Yes, they're uh, pretending that they've had no attention for the last four years. Correct. Yes, the what one's decided is what one's called Lofty, and he's because he knows I'm sat here watching. He thinks I'm watching telly. Right. So he, because I'm not giving him the tension, and then the other one, the next one will come along, and the next one will come along, and we we'll all just settle down. Yeah, no fireworks tonight, so hopefully, we'll get any uh, they were mental, but yeah, they all they all they all gonna come upstairs, and as I do my modeling, they all they're all around your feet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. so. Uh, in this issue, we're going to be fitting the driver's door and a light for one of the bus blinds. Uh, the driver's door is assembled and fitted. We also insert an LED lighting panel near the position of the blind over the open platform. So again, this issue, we won't be doing it all because uh, there's various parts we can't do until the, yeah. all the framework's in, in, in place. Um, but we'll go through all the parts and then we'll go from there. So, uh, 100A is the outer door panel right i think that's this one and the reason i think it's this one is because the holes are slightly larger but it will by the time we've got 100d it will all make sense which one is which but i yeah. think and that's a plastic part and that's actually see-through see through it's really really lightly colored and we'll just had a quick feel of um, of uh, part D, and I can see that's not going to matter the fact that that's see through. Okay. 100B is window pane. Okay, so one window pane. And that looks beautiful. As do all the parts. Okay. 100C is two handles. And they are really nice. Now, believe it or not, they are plastic. I can't believe it's not metal. I believe we call it. Okay. Uh, we've got 100D, which is the inner door panel. Inner door panel. That's this one, and that's metal. Or this could be A, you know, but I, I think this is D. Yeah, yeah, it is because it's got pins on the top and bottom. Yeah, that's why I thought if you look, if you look, it's got a thicker bar there, whereas that's got a thin bar. And this one's got larger holes and this one's got smaller holes there. But this has got no holes, just those two there. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we've got 100... E, which is a bar. Okay, okay. Now, is this has got a number on it, and I heard you calling numbers out before. Is that really relevant? It has got and, no number on this one. 
A70 it's got written on it. Yeah. Is yeah, that it doesn't, it doesn't refer to anything on the manual right. okay. at the moment. But I'm guessing that's because it is the only one in there, so perhaps it, it can't be confused with others. Uh, with, and then it brings us to screws. So we've got DP screws, uh, one, 1. 1.7 uh, times 4 mil, and they're five black ones. There are five black ones in there. NM screws, 1.5 by 3 mil, and there's four red. There are four red ones in there. Uh, KM, 1.5 by 5 mil, and there's 10 red screws. Yep. Cool. Definitely 10 in there. Took me a bit longer because there's more than three, so it takes me longer to count them. Uh, we've got <laughs> EM screws, 1.5 by 4 mil, and they're five silver ones. Lovely. Okay, and then FM screws, 2.3 two times 4 mil times 5 black. Yeah. I like 5 screws because I can count that one on one hand. 10 I require two hands, and I can only count to 20 if I'm wearing open-toed sandals. <laughs> so there is a little balloon. Obviously, uh, we'll have to do this again in issue 103, uh, but it says before starting... Uh, fit the light before starting to fit the light panel. Test that the light is still working. Retest once it has been fitted as well. So, um, obviously, we won't be doing that part, but we'll, uh, we're not we'll, doing the light then. No, fantastic. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've just uh, put everything away in preparation to get the bus across. And you just no, no because we haven't got the framework to yeah. uh, in place. So the first step would be to identify the light panel uh, and bring it round to the rear corner. Um, yeah. Then we need to lift the deck slightly so that you can slip the light panel in between the outer wall framework and the ceiling framework. Yeah. Um, and then bring the cable up behind the framework, uh, bring the LED panel through the opening so it hangs down in front of the framework. Uh, it is visible to temp... Oh, it is advisable to temporarily secure the panel in place with some low tack tape. So again, because the frame's not on, there's there's nothing for that to dangle on. So um, we're going to be starting from step four. Step four. We just take the outer door panel of the driver's door, 100A, Position it on your work surface as shown. Okay. And then yep. it says take the window pane 100B and position it on the door panel 100A as indicated. Note the orientation of the ridge on part 100B, C inset. Right. Perfect. Right. So 100A is the plastic piece or the see throughy piece. And then we're going to take this window. So just like with the slidey window, you've got there, you've got kind of, oh, I don't know. Yeah, right, I can see what's happening now. So on the wrong side, and by wrong side, I mean this is a side you don't want up. You've got two ridges there. So there's obviously something going to go in there, and that will act as a slider. If you have it in the correct orientation... You've got a line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I try and get that in the same orientation as the magazine. I would say that's roughly about right, isn't it? Yeah. You should okay. be able to see that. Okay. So that will go downwards. And there's actually nothing for this to slide. Yeah. It's more of a catch. I can see this window is going to go up. Which obviously it's not going to slide backwards and forwards, is it? I'm used to the cab window sliding backwards or forwards. But obviously with the shape of that window, that needs to go up like that. And I would say that is a really good fit. Oops. In fact, you see how good the fit is. So... Could you get really sophisticated and put a tiny layer of beeswax in there to make it 
go or um, have i been watching too many woodwork videos <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so uh okay so that's that done so then step five is to fit the inner door panel 100D over the outer door panel 100A so that the screw holes at the corners are aligned and the window 100B is enclosed. Fix in place with four DP screws. Right. So 100D is the metal piece. And I'm looking for the screw holes. So looking at these holes here, I can now see that the screw holes are there and i'm going to line those up and that just goes in as though it was made to measure and then we'll have a little test of the fit to be honest with you when i looked at the instructions i thought oh maybe i'd prefer it the other way around i'd rather screw the acrylic into the metal but now that we've got it this way round, i think that's probably a better way to do it because the weight of the metal is holding it into place just my um my odd thoughts there so dp screws which i'm probably shouldn't be putting black screws up onto a purple mat but you know me i like to do things the hard way don't think that's the right screwdriver hence the uh, clicking i think that was you taught me that wasn't it if it's clicking you've got the wrong screwdriver head in it's um yeah i hate it when it does that or probably you didn't have a good grip well i was slightly concerned there because i could hear a slight crack as i put that screw in so the next two i'm going to be a lot more careful with I think that's just on the verge of breaking and poor old Alex Demetrius, he sent me enough issues. To be honest with you, this doesn't need much of a turn, just, just a couple of turns and then it's, it's pretty much in. Oh, oh no, that sounded like a crack. Oh. So, no movement there, no movement there, but I would like that window to, um, to stick a little bit more. So I'm just quite literally giving this an eighth or sixteenth of a turn. It may actually not ever stick this window because it was a good fit, but okay, so that's not going to stay up, but I could have a go at, at tightening it further, but is it worth a chance, worth a risk? What I could do actually is, is if I got an Areva weekly ticket, I could actually <laughs> take that window open. Yeah, you knew that was coming, didn't you, Steve? <laughs> yeah, I knew that one. Well, yeah. I actually think it might even, you might it, check that in a moment after the next step. Okay. All right. Yeah. So step six is to turn the assembly over and fit the bar 100E across the outer door panel 100A. Fixed in place with three NM red screws. Ensure the screws are fully inserted so they do not catch on the door frame when the sliding door has been fitted. And the reason I say that is because you're putting more screws through the middle. Um, and I oh, think wow. I think mine tightened up after putting those screws that, in. That makes sense. It's gonna see we've got it pulled tight on the edges, and what it's gonna do is pull that. Pull that in a little bit more. Probably might, not, but might not work. But I remember after I did my yeah. window was then stiff. <clears throat> um, we shall see. But we'll see. Yeah. Oh. It doesn't yeah. seem to matter which way round this goes, but obviously, I'm going to place it right Long, inside down. Ah, oh. I've got the stamped number on it. 
as the, the stamp number has to be on the inside doesn't it yeah yeah you don't want that visible <laughs> i've just noticed you're flipping it around and i thought oh you're gonna no, screw it I, I tried it that way and then i tried it that way but i'm not trying it that way but it doesn't seem to matter whether it goes that way or flip it around so this is nm screws now these are the screws that do worry me a bit they're going to be your best friends soon what's that those nm screws well, the reason they worry me is that i do struggle putting these screws in without removing the paintwork yeah that's what i had that's why i had to buy that that paint don't know if that's the right screwdriver bit but we will find out in a bit won't we right so where should i begin on the end or in the middle now i would suggest that three screws into this tiny tiny piece of metal it's it's just holding it there it doesn't need any strength does it so and i would suggest that this screw is probably more to represent a rivet than anything else isn't it yeah now now on my model i painted that silver did you what the strip yeah because it's where the door would it's a rubbing it's like this where it's, it's where the room is. Little it's bit, of water. Water. yes. Yeah, it rubs the rubs yeah. the paint away eventually. Yes, of course it does. This is actually a runner, is it? I think when it slides into the cab, that part sort of rubs against the cab wall. Yeah. So this is the part that we need to make sure is fully in because if it's the screws are too far out, it's going to stop it from running, isn't it? Yeah. So, and I'm just, I, I dare not go too much on those screws because I don't want that acrylic to crack. But look how good that is. You can't tell which parts are plastic and which parts are painted metal. Well, you can because you know, but. Oh, your window's staying up now then. Yeah, if you, if you really jam it up, it'll stay up sometimes okay until until Horlicks points out and then which case it'll never stay up again there we go oh no but as i say i i am i am actually really tempted. anyone who has ever worked for a reaver knows that those weekly tickets are not actually for weekly tickets they are for taping windows open or shut or bodywork panels on rattles <laughs> and drafts yeah that's weekly tickets and metro newspapers that's the real reason they're on the buses <laughs> okay so step seven then uh we're going to identify the fixing points for the first handle 100 c on the outer door panel 100 a fix in place with two em screws lovely so it doesn't matter which handle is which because these have both been given the same reference number And that's going to go in like so. And EM screws. So I can see there's five in a packet. So we're going to obviously be putting another handle in at some point. Um, I will be putting my screws into little pots. Um, I just keep them in the bag while I'm doing the build. And then when I get to one screw left, they get chucked on a pile which is my to sort out later on pile right. to lose whilst you're sorting them out pile. to lose while i'm sorting them out now i've actually got all of my screws you know i know you don't believe me i think i've lost one which was a dp screw which is a bit strange because it's quite big because last the last time i dropped an nm and found that straight away yeah 
I um I tend to find that if I do drop a screw, I don't find the screw that I've just dropped, but I find about six screws that I dropped like six months earlier. There we go. That looks well. I, I do love when you put little bits of silver onto red or red onto silver. Yeah. It just makes it stick out a bit more, doesn't it? So you can now get in, in and out of the cab. Lovely. Okay, so then step eight is to turn the door over, position the second handle, 100C, on the inner door panel, 100D, as shown. Fix in place by the window with two EM screws. Lovely. So obviously we've got to be a little bit more careful here because um, when I put the first handle in, obviously this was completely flat. But obviously now we've got that handle there. So just be careful we don't break it. So let's see if maybe I can. There you go. That's a better idea, isn't it? Place it onto something, anything, maybe, possibly. Who knows? There we go. So just lift it up so that the handle is is not being pressed down. Probably won't make a difference. It's probably strong enough, but no wrong place. Oh yeah, place. that's what I did. That was my test. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did exactly the same thing, Penny. Yeah. <laughs> it's because you see two holes together. Are they actually exactly the same width? It's the, it's the, it's, it's, it's where the screw all the screws come from the other side, aren't they? Of course it is. Yeah, because yeah. I said, oh, I said, oh, this goes here, but I can't see how that screw's going to go in because the thread from the other screw's there. And then Adrian said, no, you got it in the wrong place. Yeah. Oh yeah, I felt a bit stupid. It's easy to do. Yeah, well, it obviously is because um, two top class builders have managed to do that. Not Steve isn't a top class builder, but <laughs> no, I, I, I think, I think it, when Jason did did it on his uh, build, I think he did the same mistake as well. So it's you know it's like homework, isn't it? I think Jason yeah. did the did, uh, issue yeah. on here before yeah. I did it. If you're the first person to build it, and it's like, oh, I found it difficult because of such and such, and then everyone watches you, and then everyone else is like, no, I found it really easy. Um, right, I dare not put those screws in any further than that. That handle is a little bit loose, but I do fear that if I put the screws in any more, because it's pushing against that acrylic. And in fact, they're not even going to turn anymore. So it's just for show that, that that's just for show that handle. Yeah, that's that's the inside handle anyway, isn't it? So I could be a bit fussy and maybe cut a millimeter off the end or find a shorter screw. Um, but I don't really think it's necessary on an inside part. Um, and I, can you actually see that? Now you've finished your bus, can you actually see that handle? Not really. No. Yeah. It's, 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 you know it's there, but you can't really see much Yeah. Much that detail. A little flash of silver and that's about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So... so. This is where you will need the bus again. Oh, no. This is where well, I get the same noise that Horlicks made earlier on. Unless you just get the top. If you're going to do that mod, you just need the top half at the moment. Just the top half? Yeah. Okay, so it's getting the top half because you've got all these wires and things. Oh, didn't, didn't you finish connecting them up? Oh, God. No, it's okay. Oh! Oh, God. Oh, I kind of forgot that the roof wasn't attached, so it slid off. Oh, Thank no. you. I hold there. Do I need... I don't need the roof, do I? No, no. You should, it's, we're looking at the cab roof itself. So you just need the actual... the silver frame, the side walls where your seat's on. 
So I need. So you just need the, that top part now. So you need to go to the cab. They go to the cab roof. And can you see them two silver right in front of me now? You can see two little turrets where the screw goes into the, the little screw goes into the actual. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. See them two there. Yes. All I did, obviously, you might have to take the roof off again by the four screws. But all I did was file that them two little turrets very, very slightly. And you'll find that brings the cab roof a little bit closer and might and it brings your cog up as up as well. <coughs> so when you say file just so you, slightly, so, if so I, take so if take I, the screws out. Yeah, if I describe that as removing the paint from the turrets, is that or would you want more than that? A little bit more. It might no. just need a bit. I, I sort of judged. I, I actually took the four screws, what was holding the actual um, black part off the frame, because you might need it for access to get a little file. And I just got a little file and just sort of filed a bit. Obviously, put put. you have to put the roof back on place, and you'll probably just see, as soon as that cog gets a good... A good grip, then I've stopped. Right. So can I do can I test the um cog without putting the screws back in? I suppose you could, yeah. Right. It, it, it holds it's, it holds in place. It, all you're doing is, is just lifting one, you just it's just one side of that cab roof is going a little bit closer. Yeah. And I think as well, as you said, with the paint, when it got sprayed silver, there's a bit of paint on it. What might just, um, taking that paint off, might just give you that extra 0.5 of a mil or something. To... So this particular bit is a bit of a precision item then, is it? Yeah, because you don't want to take, do you want to take too much off because then your door won't slide? Because I, I believe people were saying the door was very, very tight. When they actually oh built the vehicle, where mine was a little bit looser, so you might have to take the other screws out the other side to get access. Is that the yeah, red? My door, in. my door was really loose. So what? Is it another? Ah, there they are. Is it just the four screws? I think it's just the four, the four black screws. Yeah. I I actually it's been so long since I've done this. I mean, even if I'd have done one issue a week with no break, it's still a long time since we've done this, isn't it? Yeah. I said that before you remove the cab roof, just have a look at the cog and just see how much you think it's out before the before you actually pull I'm the sure roof. Used to work. Oh, your stop thing at the front, Ben. Yeah. Do you know what? If I push that, it works perfect. That's what I was saying. So all you need, all all I did was just file those two metal turrets down, which right. should which should bring that cog a little bit closer to the to the gear work. So it looks like I only really need to touch them. Yeah. Like probably like I'm removing the paint twice. Yeah, I, I think I removed it down to its metal. Right. So there was no there was no paint no paint there. And then test fit it. And then if you do what you've just done then, squeezed it and said, right, it's it's got a better fix. See the trouble is that test fit with a push, it works. And I do remember it working before. Mm. And I, I didn't really understand why it went wrong. Um, right, guys, bear with me a sec. I'm just going to get my body cam because um, I'm lighting the light on it. It's a little bit dark where I'm working because the light's not coming through. But having said that, I could probably, we could probably all benefit from the camera as well. So that's a lot better. So if I... Um, I'm going to do the optician again. I'm going to do better or worse, better or worse. <laughs> um, that's that camera, isn't it? There we go. So that's a bit better, isn't it? For everyone. 
you can uh, don't need to imagine where I am anymore can do you that should, that should release the kit right there you go so as you said just file those two top for it the ends here then yes yes right so find myself doesn't have to be a flat file but it has to be a file with a flat surface mm. for example i could use that one which is a shaped file yeah but so I need to try and keep it the same angle, don't I? Yeah, I mean, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't very specific. I just rubbed all the paint away, and then, um, and then put it back on, and just see how close it. You just, you just, as you said, you, you, you're very, very close, aren't you? To gain a full lock on that cog. Yeah. So i just i just found that happened on mine i just did i did what, what you're doing now my cog locked into the, the mechanism easy and it made that cab door a little oh, bit loose looking at what's happening when i file it i think this actually hasn't been cut straight right it's a slight angle because what happens you know when you rub something on sandpaper if you get part of it is worn and part of it is left, you know it's not totally flat to the sandpaper, don't you? See, they might have made it. They might have made an angle to make the cab roof look like it's straight. Right. See, the trouble is, I won't really know if that's in until I put the screws in. Oh, you know what? That might actually be better. So I'll probably I'll probably just do another another couple of rubs for uh, good luck. Okay. So what would happen hypothetically if I rubbed that too much? Your cab door wouldn't wouldn't fit. It'll just it'd be the, 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 that you you end up with your cab roof too high. So those that you would you probably would have to extend those those top lugs on your um, cab door. Okay. So it's work roundable then if I do too much. So yeah. really, ideally, what I want to be doing is setting myself a Sunday afternoon to do this and do a little just, rub on those turrets. Uh, what did you call them, turrets? Yeah, that sort of mountain turrets are. I mean, you can put, yeah. as you put it back now, you know what you're doing. It, hopefully yeah. that's made your cog, because everyone had a lot of trouble. The, some did have a lot of trouble with the cog, didn't they, to going together. And as you said, hopefully when it's all screwed down, yeah, but if you sat here on a Sunday afternoon, you took the screws off, you gave that a little rub with the uh, file, put the screws back on. Oh dear, I haven't rubbed it enough. Right, take the screws off, yeah. give it another rub. You might end up taking this off 10 times, um, but you will get there. See, I don't know. I might have overdone this. What I did is I rubbed one side yeah yeah do you know what actually that's not quite there mm. but could be because the screw's not in i'm really worried yeah. about holding this on the back That is a vast improvement, Steve. Yeah. But I mean, it's all, it's, as you said, it's that Sunday afternoon now where you'll say, yeah. right, well, you've obviously got, you, you were obviously, when you showed it last time on your stream, you're going, oh, damn, I really want my destination to work. So you, at least now you can, you can, have, you, you can have, a, you can see there's, there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, isn't there? You can have a, a fine tune. It is, it is part of the way there. Um, it's a lot better, but it's it's not perfect. Yeah. So I you mean, don't I actually think me to do this. You know, we've got we've got Steve-O on on the stream. Take advantage of him while he's here. 
I know we've gone over what we normally plan, but to be honest when, with you, when have we ever finished a stream on time? Okay. I mean, I think I actually got my little Dremel, you know, a little with a, a little bit of disc on it, and just. Um... I did consider that, but I thought I might be a little oh, yeah, bit. As I was saying, I, I actually did. A, I actually did a thing on the Facebook group and showed, took photographs and showed people how to do it. So. Well, the part that I'm excited about is, um, I I always look for back out options. You know, I often say about when I first started to paint, paint figures, people said, oh, yeah, yeah, this is how to strip paint. So if you paint it badly, you can strip the paint. And I'm like, oh, in that case, I'm willing to have a go. Um, what I'm what I'm worried about is over filing this and the door yes. is going to be loose. You basically yeah, said they would found it. Yeah, I mean, I just know that's why I always say to people just, Take it, it as long as the one that cog locks in, you're happy. It's, it's better, you're saying it's better now than before, so god, yeah. So, I um, what I did is I counted the rubs with the file. That's just how I work. I yeah. count the number of um actions with the with the file, and it was about 15 16. Um, I got a thing about threes, um, so this second time. I gave it exactly nine. And if you anybody wants to go back and watch the stream and count them, you are more than welcome to. You know, all you're doing is make you're just raising one side of the cab roof up a little bit, which obviously is the bit where the the the, the runner is for the um the, the cab door. Yeah, I'm just the only bit I don't like is Directly above this is the seats, which, right. because they're plastic, if you hold them in the wrong position and then push too hard, you're going to lose a seat. So it's just supporting from behind in just the right position. For me, that's the hard bit. And also... Making sure that screw is really tight because if that screw is loose and I'm going, oh, my cog's not working. Steve, I'm going to your house right now and kiss you. Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's meshing, so it's. Um, right. Let me do a bit you... with the camera as best I can. Um, yeah, so what I'm worried about is if I screwed that on but it was a little bit loose, that cog isn't going to work because it's not in as, as much. And then I'll take it off, file it down a bit more, and then screw that in really tight. And then it's going to be work too much, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, so, if, it, yeah. if it's working now, it's obviously working now. So I yeah. think once all the body works collapsed and oh, screwed oh. together. Yeah, it does take a bit of uh a little bit. I think it might be the angle yeah, it's the angle I'm doing it at. Yeah. But it's it's trying to catch a little bit. But as you can see it's moving and it's going in both directions. Yeah, so it's, it's, I think it's, it's come unwound on one of the um the things that when you change direction. You can yeah, see well, it yeah. takes a bit of time just to catch yeah. up, yeah. But, but it's move, at least it's moving now, isn't it? I mean, before you, you were yeah. concerned it wasn't moving. So I've got a little bit of um, stiffness when I move the blind. Yeah, oh, it I does lock up. It's, I found mine still locks up. It could actually be that it was coming to the end of the blind. It could actually be I'm holding. See, when you move it with your thumb inside and your finger outside it's fine but you're not going to have that luxury right so bear with me i am going to do you know what i'm feeling i'm feeling a bit of number 11 charing cross how's that yeah lovely so um, what I'll do then is I will just do this um, 
stop sign. So as you said, if you're going to put the, that roof on now, and you, you you still you still want to tweak around with it, you've still got a little. You'll you'll know when you've put your cab door on how much yeah. more you can probably move it up. But right, so I need I to get. Want, up then. I wouldn't say you've put that much metal off that just to make that a little bit better. No, I I think I probably took um, probably the equivalent equivalent of a couple of layers of paint, if that. Because um, I did, I did lightly rub it. I didn't. I wasn't ramming that in hard. No. Um, right. So right. Forgive me, guys. I'm doing this very carefully. Oh. Ooh. Oh, it's heavy. I think before I put that roof on, I think I'm going to get the hose from my airbrush. And I'm going to give that a good hosing to get rid of all that dust. And I've been very naughty and I've left the batteries in. But the soldering on the, on the battery compartment has held up. Right. Oh, sorry. This um, this camera has actually broken, so it gets. Try and move it. It gets a bit loose. Right. Do you think that's going to be a good angle for the next set of instructions? Yeah. Yeah, it should be okay. Okay. So let's pop the roof on. So we can. We haven't officially fixed this yet, have we? We've just officially placed it on top. God, I, 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 I kind of have a big warm glowy feeling inside every time i put this roof on i know it's still a long way from finish but boy doesn't it look wonderful have i still got my sand yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay that's fine um yeah so yeah i get this wonderful feeling when i um every time i put that roof on it just looks amazing uh, Penny put a drop. Do you know what? I'll do that now. I will actually do that. Pam's just said um, put a drop of oil on the cogs. I think that's what I did. Um, mine's really smooth. Yeah. I just put one, probably overdone it actually. Oh my God. Oh, oh you cannot believe the action on that. In the end, that was just that was just paint. What was stopping it? <laughs> yeah, the only place it's sticking is right at the end. Number eleven, Hammersmith Fulham. Can't go any further than that. Old witch. That is absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can see too well there, but that is just going around so smoothly. I think it even sounded better as well, didn't it? So yeah, you can hear the, co the cogs are properly meshing. Yeah. I can actually see there's a cog there that's a little bit on the hook. Yeah, I have put a little tiny bit too much oil on and it's come down onto the cog, onto the finger, but um, that's fine because it was important to keep the oil off the blinds when we were building it. Oh, it's, it's gone again. It's gone again. I think it's possibly cog, uh, clogging up when you get all the way to the end. Oh, smells of engine oil now, but that's three and one oil on it. Smells just like a bus. 
yeah it, it's definitely working better sort of more in the middle of the blinds that's that's the best way to do uh, best uh, best area isn't it yeah right okay so what's the next stage then horlicks if we want to carry on so carefully lift the upper deck away from the lower deck so that you can fit the driver's door in place as you fit the door ensure the pegs on the bottom of the inner door panel 100d fit into the slot in the cabin floor 35a inset above and lower the upper deck into place ensuring that the pegs on the top of the inner door panel 100d fit into the groove in the cab ceiling lovely right so i i, I don't really like to get on with the way around it's all the way around is it is it no we got the right one yeah it's with the beading on the outside sorry it looked like the inside that's it right so under there you can't see it from that camera angle but there's a little runner in there and then there's a runner on the floor there you've got two pegs there and two pegs there and what we will do is slip that into there, rest it on the lower lugs, line it up with the upper lugs. And yes, I see what you mean now. I think maybe I filed too much off there. No, I think, I think your cab roof, I think it, it needs yeah. to be, cab roof yeah. will be coming down further. Yeah, right. the roof's not sitting right. Not sitting the right. Deck, the upper deck's not sitting right, no. Okay. Yep, you're right there. That's that's now actually gone quite stiff. It could be that I'm quite lined up properly. Are all the uh, all the metal lugs in all the plastic holes okay on the, on the bottom roof? It seems to be a screw catching on it now. Yeah, I can see what it is now. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment on that until it's actually the roof is screwed in properly. It could be that the screw, that the roof has come this way a little bit, um, but it looks like. Yeah, you can, you, when, from the camera we're looking at now, your cab roof's like going up in the air. Yeah, what I'm looking at is um, looks like. A screw this screw there seems to be catching there it's it's quite a flush fit See, if you hold it parallel to this side panel there, I think that's going to catch. So I'll see how it goes. If, um, if, give if the, I give the upper deck a jiggle because it's, it's not sitting right at all. It's yeah. going upwards. Um, the low cap pegs are in. Possibly not. Possibly not. I think I've got a I got mean, yeah, I know Mark did it and I did it. It's my actual bulkhead. The actual bulkhead, you have to sometimes like to file that down as well. Oh. How's it looking from the front, Penny? Like lining it up. looks fine, but it's missing a lot of framework. So the actual answer there is I really don't know so i'm not i'm not overly worried if um see that that cab roof should be in line with the cap the top of the but the that zip the that's how yeah. it should be. but then you can't open the door because that 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 screws in the way you can open the door but you got to push quite hard I don't know. I could always do a mod. I could always, um, I could glue those screw heads in and then cut them off with a razor saw. 
um, and cut the heads off. Is that stripped loose? No. But I daren't screw those screws in any tighter because behind there is a little bit of acrylic. Yeah. So I, I can always file the heads off that. Maybe put a tiny bead of super glue, screw that in tight, leave it for a day or two, and then um, file the heads off the um, or take the heads off the screws. We'll see. Once I've got this screwed in, it, it might work better. Yeah, no, you're, not, you're, not taking, you're not taking that much off. You can't. You've, you've lost. You've lost the actual um, the grip of the little, the little lugs. Yeah, it, I can still get the door open, but I don't know if you can see that screw yeah. there. It's catching. To me, to me, I just file that one. That I just I would file that one screw down. Yeah. yeah. But I'll, I'll see what happens once we get the roof. At least I know the door's not going to fall off on its own, is it? And to be honest with you, I like this door open because it shows off that the model has a door that opens. Yeah. You know when, like, people will go up to the bus and they'll go, oh, does the window move? Or they put their hands in, they, they twist, the, does the steering move? And they, no, actually didn't move, but thanks for breaking that off for me. <laughs> um, you know, if this door didn't open and someone goes along and goes, oh, does it open? You know, they rip, the handle's going to get ripped off, isn't it? Just remember, things might be idiot-proof, but they um, they do invent new kind of idiots. Right, so that's that. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that if you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, <clears throat> on the front of the bus. Yeah. I need to check. You've got the uh, the black pipe details. Mine were getting caught between the front and that. Is are they clear? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, really good point there, Horlicks. Um, let me, um, right, I'm just going to move this camera because I'm going to move the bus around, and I don't think I'm going to. Oops, I just done something I didn't want to do. I don't know what I did. Right, bear with me a sec, guys. I'm just going to move you to a position where you can't see a thing but it's just going to enable me to move my bus yeah sorry r2 i just flipped you with a bit of scrap plastic oh i just had to um lift that with the edge of my finger and it's rather heavy right so oh so when you say the pipe, you mean this bit there, don't you? Yeah. And it looks like it might actually be in the way. Oh, you're a little bit closer than I am there. There we go. So. Oh, that's all right. No, it's not jamming, is it? Not in the way. No, I, I think it's just that... It's not, I just think it's not put in yet. That's all it is. And I don't think that door's going to be a problem either. No, I'd I say once that's fitted properly, you'll have to accept it then and then see what needs to be done. But yeah, it's definitely not sitting quite right. But yeah. it's going to take a lot of, well, as Mark said as well, he, he, I mean, mine luckily went on first time pretty much. Um, Listen, I've had an awful lot of luck with putting framework on. I think yeah. when I the um, when I put the roof of the lower deck on, I think someone said to me, "Oh, that's going to give you a lot of problems," and boom, mine went straight on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm, I, you know, fair, fair is fair. If I get a difficult issue, it's about time, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually ground, you know, the actual the, the on the top of the the ceiling the little turrets what the um framework sits in i actually got rid of mine so it could move around more freely and then the bulkhead what's the driver's bulkhead the, the curved bit i actually had to do a bit of filing of that 
yeah. and that brought that brought it all oh, that brought it down. So it's one of them army wires didn't run down the chassis; they ran down the side of the side of the vehicle as well. Right. So I didn't, I didn't get any wire trapped. Yeah, I'm being really, really careful with my wires. Because really? the ashes, those, those wires were all all ashes put into the into the into the chassis into the framework into the. And you had to screw push them all in. But yeah. in, the, in the end, I just diverted all my wires down the side. Yeah. And I mean, so at I, the end of the day, if you think they're too um, long, too short, whatever, um, you can always extend them, cut them, and extend them. You know, don't yeah. be, don't be worried. Yeah, yeah, no problem. There was no problems with my wires. They just, yeah. uh, I just, I was <laughs> yeah. running down the down the down that gap down the side of the bus, so I had no issues on being squashed. Because that's the trouble, isn't it? When you start to screw everything together, and then it's all screwed together, and then the upper deck lights don't work because you've just crushed a wire. Yeah, and if you're pushing a bit of framework against the wire. You've basically turned the entire bus into one big short circuit, haven't you? Yeah. So I mean, that there's a there's a few options there to get your 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 top deck lower. Yeah. But it looks like it looks it's not it doesn't look that far off, but it's it's obviously a little bit. Yeah. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a great big bit of masking tape across my cab, just in case that door ever decides to fall out. Okay. Well, that should give me a little bit of a um, little bit more confidence. So, if you can see that, I just put a great big bit of masking tape. So, that door, it probably could still fall out, but it's going to need a good job to do it. So, and I've just remembered all these little opening panels. So, it's, it is July, isn't it, in 1966? So let's have those panels open, give them a bit of ventilation. Right, do you want to go through the rest of the instructions then, um, Horlicks? Yeah, um, well, sorry. I will. Um, I will put the bus back on the shelf. How's that? Okay, so yeah, it's, uh, step 10 would be to check that the door is properly fitted and able to slide open and close. Uh, yeah, we're gonna to have to have some, do some work on that. Yeah, we can't do that because we haven't put the upper framework in. No. Uh, and then once that is done, you can fix the right wall framework, ninety-three A to the cab frame with forty uh, A with an FM screw. And then step eleven is to fix the front framework, eighty-six F to the right wall framework 93a the left wall framework 91a and the cab frame 48 using three fm screws Lovely. and then take the front blind frame 86h supplied with issue 86 fit it against the front of the frame 86f check the screw holes are aligned and fix in place with 8km red screws um and i haven't actually done mine yet and i can't remember now why i haven't done that there's a reason i think it's got to come off again for something mm, i can't remember that one uh, and then 13 is to turn the model around so that you can access the stair rail, fit the ends of the handrails, 90i and 59b together. Which we can't do at the moment because we haven't put... This is all going to end up getting pulled apart again. Yeah. Yeah. And then that is the finished views. Yeah, which doesn't look quite look like mine, but that's because of the panels. Um, so that was a rather large, that was rather a big-ish, big, big, big build, wasn't it? Hmm. So, so I can't remember why, I can't remember why I didn't do this step on mine. 
I've got a piece of tape on the front saying KM. Right. Okay. But, yeah, and that is uh, the build. And then next week, a section of the right wall framework is fitted with windows and attached to the model. Oh, um, there we go. So what I understand is that the next two weeks are pretty much the same way as the last two weeks in that you've got you do a piece then you do another piece and you put the two together and then that will create a fourth piece of side framework because i've got three pieces up there two long one short the two long ones are for the upstairs and the short one obviously is for downstairs um, and then that will take us to issue 103 which I'm now a bit like this with it. Um, so, yeah, no, interesting. Lots of spare screws left from where we've not been able to screw panels in. Um, things like the FMs and that. Uh, so, oh, shut up. Lots of KM screws. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, it's it's taken us a long time, but it is two issues, and you know we can't do an issue quick, can we? Because too much of that between the two of us. Um, really big thanks to Steve for helping us out on that one because um, two real top tips. I know, I know, there's not many people who haven't built this yet, but if you haven't built it, consider doing it as per the magazine. But without the top, the, the top roof on, and then build the top roof in sections. That is an absolutely brilliant idea. That's I wish I'd have known that, and I could actually because I'm getting confused with. All right, build this issue, but don't do this, and then don't build that issue, and then we ended up going back. I think 103. We're going to be doing like bits of about five issues, which has got to be confusing, isn't it? Plus, I think as well, you can actually build, you know, the red framework, what goes on top of the ceiling. Yeah. When you can sort of start, when you've done your ceiling and got everything done, you can, instead of just trying to plant your framework and trying to squeeze it all together, you can actually build it in sections as well. Yeah. I did have a problem myself with when I fit the frame as a full frame. And there was a lot of tweaking and grinding and plastic cracking. So if you actually did it in sections to do the front bit, it probably let, allows the bus to sort of move along sort of thing. You know, the twist and grind. Yeah. Oh, right. So do you want to catch up with the chat? I think there's probably an awful lot. Um, yeah, we did yeah. chat a little bit different. We, um, we, um, ba -ba 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 right, we concentrate on the build and then we worry about the chat later. So please don't ever think we've ignored you. We will get to you eventually. So, and plus, it's fun trying to watch Horlicks try and figure out whereabouts we are on the chat. Right, so David Bassett says four pounds for interior posters. This is the Peter Curtin posters, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't an awful price. Uh, then you've got Days Hobbies, Pound Bailey, Andrew. I bought my interior posters for eBay. Uh, a lady from Hull made them for my for all my made them for my whole bus and the interior posters for Christine's bus uh, was from Kingsway's models. Kingsway models, five pounds, I think, with postage. Yeah. Um, and then David Bassett put plus Bailey plus posters and packaging. Um, and then Pam put Pascal been to the groomer today to get his fur cut. Pascal is a rescue Yorkie. Uh, he says woof woof to you, Penny. If if you've got any Kit Kats in your sweet drawer, he'd like you to give give him one of them. Do you know what? I just think it's funny a Yorkie eating a Kit Kat. Yeah, but it could be worse. A Kit Kat eating a Yorkie would be worse, wouldn't it? <laughs> and then Pam again. Thanks, Dave. Peter Curtin now doing 
doing three A4 sheets of interior posters in his range. Um, yeah, Pam put uh, Penny put a drop of oil on the cogs, which I did, and it made a hell of a difference. Uh, love minis. A uh, little lube goes a long way at Penny's pit stop. Yeah. I, I put three and one oil on. I think maybe rather than put a bit of oil on them, maybe I should have put a bit of lube on them. You know, even if it's just a bit of Vaseline or something, something a little bit more solid. Um, you've got some special grease, haven't you, Horlicks? Yeah. Um, I think that it just enables it to get just nice and thick and more more grease rather than oil. But oil's done the trick. But obviously oil, oil has a bit more of a struggle against gravity. It's always going to be trying to come downwards, whereas grease seems to stick a bit better. Um, and then Pam says, um, my oil is triangle for model railways from from the 1960s. Okay. Um, is that one of those? Um, oh, I don't know. When, you, when I see a colon, it usually means it's one of those um, emoji things, isn't it? But the emojis don't always show properly. So you don't know if it's an emoji or fat fingers on the keyboard or something like that. Um, and I get that a lot. I just... It's like that episode of Simpsons. Your fingers are too fat to call 911. <laughs> uh, day hobbies. Front corner panels, Horlicks. That's why you haven't put your front on yet. Front corner panels. But do you know what? Well, mine's gone blank. I only did the build last week, week before. So you'll have um, a bit of fresh, refreshing memory later on, won't you? I'm going to have to, yeah. <laughs> uh, Danny Bills, well done for a good build. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was good. David Bassett said he enjoyed the build tonight. So uh, when did it get any easier? It doesn't seem to get any easier, this build. It's hard work every week. Yeah, I think one thirty one thirty gets easy, doesn't it? <laughs> I think yeah, it's one hundred and thirty-one. That's the easy issue, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I thought I got away with all that, and I'm one hundred and five now. I think, but I heard that one hundred and nine might be a bit of an issue, a bit of a pig. Right, no, that's fine. I mean, you know, it, when you get a hard issue, once you've completed it, you know, it's big pat on the back time, and you're like. Yeah, I've earned this box full of chocolate bars that I've bought or whatever you like. Um, but it's like when I did that first Jaguar wheel, that first wheel took me three, four hours and then I finally cracked it. And, you know, and, and I, I earn a pat on the back for that. And now I can put together a wheel in less than an hour. You know, that's all the stages. It took me about four hours just to get the first row of spokes in. Now I can get four rows of spokes in in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's there's something satisfying about completing a difficult issue, I think. And, you know, at the end of it, you're like, yeah, yeah, I've done, I done well there. <laughs> uh, no, Pam says I was at £4 a sheet or £4 for all three. Uh, and then uh, they, yeah, in regards to Kit Kat, <laughs> they're his favourite. If you say Kit Kat, it's his pickup. Got to be careful, though, because dogs shouldn't be eating chocolate, should they? Because apparently too much chocolate is poisonous to dogs. Yeah. So, um... Oh, Love Mini says, uh, Penny's Pit Stop, remember when you put in the coil springs in the front? Yeah, but then about... A few weeks later, they said, oh, undo them and put them in it, take them apart. And we're like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> but that was hard work getting those first ones in, wasn't it? Yeah. I thought it was really hard. I mean, I did, did I clamp mine down? I think that... I don't think up. you did, but I did. I Yeah, because then I... That's right, you learned... threw that clamp, hadn't you? Yeah, I learned from you, and then yeah. I... 3D printed a clamp and I saw it, I thought well, that might work, and then it did yeah. just about, and then it just snapped about. and off. Yeah. Well, I wonder actually if you could get a I mean, obviously we're not doing the build anymore, and but you know, maybe at the time if we thought of it, maybe have a big clamp that goes over all of it, but it's got four 
very large holes in it, just in the right position that you could put the screws in. Mm. But, you know, it's probably not worth the effort. Just, you know, sit there and print a 3D printed object for 12 hours just to save yourself five minutes work. Kind of a bit counter counterproductive there, isn't it? Mm. So, Steve, did we leave? Did we live up to your standard on that one? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's been nice to it's nice to come on and sort of say because I've done the build. Yeah, and it's nice to say, well, I did that, and like like tonight now, you just just filed a little bit of metal away, and look how your blind just started working, and it was like, oh, yeah, it's good. Oh, that, you know what? Amazing, and I've got to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't have thought to do that. I certainly wouldn't have thought to do that today. Um, well, you were, I think at the time you were actually thinking about 3 d a, a washer or something at one stage and yes. raise yeah. the actual fog up. Yeah. You know, as you said, it, it does take a bit of work to get that. that that. It's a bit of work yeah. now to get the actual thing down to sit proper. Oh. I've got this new shelfy thing and I haven't glued the top bit on and I keep forgetting it's not glued on. So... Every time I pull this drawer out, it pulls the shelf. Um, but yeah, rather than 3D printing a cog, that's all you need, a file with a flat side to it. And all, all I did was I just run that file, trying to keep absolutely dead, dead straight. Probably I overdid that. Probably didn't need to keep it. You know, could have got away with an angle. Um, but I noticed that as I rubbed it, it wasn't filing even which suggests to me that the actual end wasn't even. And mm. once I think I got it level, I think that was what made the difference. Yeah. So, and it really wasn't an awful lot. It was <laughs> about 20, 20 rubs of the file, which is nothing really, is it? And hopefully that'll make the door a little bit looser so it's easier to uh, open and shut. And say you, I would just, just take that first screw head yeah. Just grind it down a little bit. Yeah. I can't remember mine. I think mine does get caught, but not as bad as that. But mine is sort of together now. So yeah. Well, I'll see what happens. If mine if my screw head is getting caught too much, then it's gonna have to come off and get rubbed down or cut off or removed or um but I'm actually thinking of um you know you said about painting it silver. Hmm. What about rubbing it in one direction with sandpaper? I'm taking the paint off. To make it look like it's actually been scraped. Yes. Well, I mean, might... I've noticed that, you know, the little handle, what you keep open the door? Yeah. Mine, because it's been open that much, actually, the, the silver's actually rubbing away on it. It's actually worn. What well, actually... It, 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 it looks like a proper handle because it's actually because you use it to open and shut all the time. It's actually worn the actual silver paint away a little bit. Right. So yeah, you could you could do like that could be like a mod where you're going to do a nap. I've done a silver panel just so it's silver straight away. But if you you can do yours like a bit of you know like it's it's on its way. Oh, you know it's yeah. red and if you keep giving it light rubs. Mm. You're not going to hit all of the red, are you? And you'll have a little bit of red on the edges. Um, so but there's, you, you take, you more take. Natural, there's no na no more natural stimulation than or simulation than actually yeah. rubbing it. But you presume you'll have to take the take the beading off the off the off the door, won't you, to stop the any damage to the door paintwork? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you, but yeah, that, that could be another way you could actually make a natural weathering type of thing. You've done it like a natural, like it if looks like it's been straight. On the on the front of the door, then at the back, yeah. it wouldn't yeah, be yeah. fully opened, would it? Yeah, yeah. So it's another it's little mod into it. It would it, it naturally would go like that eventually, wouldn't it? It's paint it's painted from the paint shop brilliantly, and over a couple of weeks or months it, it's worn yeah. away again going to take long is it? it's like your little oil stain mod around the um around the petrol uh the diesel mm. uh fill up that is really not going to take very long um and, and i've noticed with our buses i don't i suppose it's the same with that even though our buses go through the bus wash every single day 
those bristles can't get right in. So you no. get that junky diesel build up around the. Uh, so yeah. it to be there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it doesn't take long to build up. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. So, even if you say this, this was the Alderman Works, or whether it's two weeks earlier, there will be a little bit of wear and tear in that two weeks. Mm, yeah. First person to get in that bus when it comes fresh out of the factory is going to be the first person to do some damage to the bus, isn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, very, very unlucky. Well, we do, don't they? Scratch a panel and say nothing. The door. He's now got a scrape along that panel. Yeah. Yeah. Then he's gonna put his foot into the into the foot pet foothole. So now there's dirt in there. He's gonna sit in, he's gonna bend that let that, that seat is gonna crease a little bit, so you're gonna get a little crease hole. You're gonna mm -hmm. uh, after he's done an eight hour shift, and then he's handed over to another driver to do an eight hour shift, you got a little bit of wear and tear on the on the steering wheel. The window yeah. might have a little bit of a mark on it, you know, and that's one day of use. So some of the root masses are nearly out 24 hours a day, weren't they? So they would have been in London, weren't they? Because the yeah. buses we had uh, at Dartford, um, and I, I gather that the um, the buses aren't well at the moment they're not as popular, but we used to start some of our shifts at four in the morning and we some of them used to finish at two. So I think they're out for about 20 hours a day. But then you've got night buses, and if you're using a route master, you know, there'll be a route master on the night bus, so it could well be, yeah, like you say, that bus might be out on the road for 20 hours a day, 24 hours. It yeah. must come at some point to go to have bus checks, but um, but a lot of buses that we had, you know, you might be bringing the bus in at two in the morning. And you look on the defect card and it's probably been out on the road since five in the morning. Mm. Yeah. Right. Um, I did notice you fiddling around, not fiddling around, but having a look around the uh, YouTube schedule spreadsheet. Or do you want to do this, the YouTube schedule? Yeah, <clears throat> can do. Well, I got it up ready. I wasn't sure if you had it up or not. No. So um, today is the 18th. So tomorrow we've got mark's mods uh and he will be doing root master issue 109 uh, and that'll be eight o'clock on his channel so don't miss that um and then friday is myself doing no. terminator eight o'clock uh again on my channel now uh, i was watching that because now I've got tomorrow off. I apologise in advance, Mark. I probably won't be watching your stream live because I've got a. This is they, they treat me so badly at my depot. I'm on. I'm supposed to be on permanent late. They give me two days off, and I'm on a half past six start on Friday, but then I'm back on late on Saturday, which means I'm around Friday night. Um, so. I'm going to be going to bed about eight o'clock in the evening on on Thursday tomorrow night. So, Mark, I will catch up on your stream. I absolutely promise you. I've got a vested interest in watching it um, because I could watch it, learn everything there is to learn about the issue 109, and then when we come to do it on this channel, I can go. No, nah, I haven't got a clue. Right? Okay. And then go. Duh, duh, duh. And everyone goes, wow, you did that so well. And I'll go, well, I don't know how. It's the first time I've ever seen the issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, what was it? So yeah, Friday, yeah, it's me for Terminator. Uh yeah. then Saturday I will be doing the Root Master issue one hundred and five. Are you doing the are you doing the old um right, we'll get as many issues done until we can't be bothered doing any more? What on the root master? The terminate and root master. Yeah, terminate. Yeah, there's such short issues. One issue done, you might get ten or twenty. Yeah, right. yeah, um, yeah. Root master. Yeah, Saturday root master. 105. My channel. Eight o'clock. Okay, Sunday we've got Mark's mods. It says Spitfire 35 uh, and 36, <coughs> uh, but it says here he's got no issues yet. So it could be Dave Hopkins. 
I feel absolutely awful about that. My issues came last week. I'm still playing a bit of catch up on my Spitfire issues. So it actually wouldn't matter if I wait a couple of extra weeks. I could actually send my issues to Mark and then Mark sends his issues to me when he gets them. Um, but let's just pray. I mean, we've still got um, two more posts, three more postal days until that that yeah. comes up. Those so, put, yeah, so Sunday's Mark's mod, Spitfire 35, 36. Uh, but depending on whether they arrive, it could be day hobbies instead. Um, so that will be on his channel. So, um, yeah, just have to watch that space. So either Mark's mods or Dave's hobbies will be live on Sunday, 8 o'clock. There will be a show. We're just not 100% sure which show. No. Uh, then Monday, we've got Chris Davies' world. He's doing Ecto-1. Issue two continued eight o'clock on his channel. Uh, then we've got Tuesday, which is going to be built with Adrian, and he's doing the Ferrari F40 issue seventeen to twenty. Uh, he's starting his stream at seven thirty, um, and that's on his channel. Um, so check out Build with Adrian, and then brings us back to Wednesday. Uh, so we've got. Yeah, Penny Day, as Mark, Mark says. Um, so you've got Paint with Penny and Yorkshire Craft are both doing the Paint with Diamond show at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so that will be on either of their channels. They, they dual stream. So. And then takes us back to uh, this time next Wednesday when we should be doing the part work show Route Master issue 101 and 102. And I'll wait. I know a couple of errors on the um, on the part work spreadsheet. Um, so guys, if anyone fancies doing anything live or anything like that, drop us a drop us a bell. And uh, maybe we can get your show advertised as well. If you if you've got any new shows, any anything new that you're doing, just drop us a message. So we don't mind helping out. Always happy to promote a new channel. Um, when you start making videos, Steve, I think it's time at the moment. So I find with the shifts, just like yourself, you get one day and then you concentrate. I think it's more. I've been doing things on my phone and stuff like that. Maybe when lockdown, yeah, when we start going to bus shows and I can go to rallies and put things on and say, "Well, I'm, I'm here today," because it's all. I'm also going to various places, but I think it's. I've watched Mark's like editing and stuff like that. I think just get spending a day into it, sort of just experimenting. Yeah, when when I start publishing my 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 uh, videos again. A couple of people had said to me, um, oh, make sure you're not pushing yourself too much. And I'm like, yeah, well, what I've done is I didn't bring everything in straight away. I mm. I introduced that one. A couple of weeks later, I introduced the next one and then the next one. And what I'm now starting to find is that a lot of them have caught up now. Things like the fear and the, um, and the jag. And the fear, sorry, the fear and the jag, and very soon the Spitfire are all caught up. So mm. instead of making like 14 videos a week, I'm now making about seven, which is a lot easier. Um, yeah. But you kind of have to get yourself in a little bit of a system. Um, so when I get the Terminators, I make 10 Terminator videos. Yeah. And then... Oh, you find yourself in a rhythm. I don't make a Terminator, then a Fiat, then a Jag, and then back to a Terminator. I think it's, I think it's like anything. I'm probably waiting for another build. You know, with, with, I mean, yeah. I was like with Horlicks. I was, I was, I've subscribed to the Hogwarts. Obviously, I subscribed to Eddie. You know, I've seen obviously that the, the, there's a challenge. There's another two cars come out. I think Marks looking at the Eleanor. And there's um, the Ch Dodge Charger, which is on the Nexus channel. You know, yeah. there seems to be a, there's going to be a lot of builds coming out. All of it. it's going to be like, oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's like that, though, isn't there? There's nothing, and then they they're all going to come at once, and then yeah. we're like, uh, I want to do them all. 
this is it. See, I'm hoping, I'm hoping probably it will be the truck and then we'll be back, we'll be back to doing like every week again, you know, like where I can be involved with doing it. I enjoy doing the build, I think, more than anything. And let everybody else do the it works for everyone else, doesn't it? Because yeah, you get you doing the build, you're enjoying the build, everyone's enjoying you doing the build, and then you've got other people doing the show, yeah, uh, which is what they enjoy doing. You know, some people are quite happy to like direct things. Um but then it's like I know Mark laughs at it, but Mark throws a couple of ideas in, you think, do you know what? And you go away thinking about it. And I don't know what you do. I'm driving my bus, and sometimes you start, hmm, yeah, I, I'm thinking about that mod. And then before you know it, it, it you're coming back yeah. and saying, I've done that mod. Well, this whole bench got designed by me driving buses. Mm. You know, thinking and planning while I'm driving. This is how I've, I've shaped all the wood, that the ideas come while I'm driving. Then when I'm not working, I'm putting it together. And um, see, I, I'm uh, the danger at the moment is I've got this big bench I want to build, and I really want to build it, but it's not a good time to build it. And I might actually manage to persuade someone to let me build one for them. I'll yeah. say, like, you supply everything, and then I'll build it, and then you can keep it when, when I've made it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm already looking at mods to it, doing things slightly differently. Um, instead of instead of installing the drill for drill, drill press, I'm actually installing a motor with a, a little variable power thing and a little drill chuck. And mm. it saved itself like 20 quid on, on the drill. And it's much, much better than a basic drill. But this is all what I do while I drive. I'm mm. thinking of things. And, I know, think as well, I, I, I was going to build my root master as a basic root master as yourself, as the build. That and was then, exactly what I was planning. I said, and then gonna... Jason brought out the side lights and I went, Go on, I'll have a go at that. Then the yeah. Facebook group, people saying, Well, I've done this with mine. Yeah. And then the guy got involved and they asked me to come on the show and say, Can you? And then it, it sort of set it, it, it just sets everything off. Then you start thinking, Then, well, yeah. I'll, I'll put an extra light in here. I'll put, I'll do this, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, I wanted most of those mods would have never happened. If I wasn't yeah. involved in the show, so that's yeah. why I, I I think I'm I'd be more interested in more another part work, where yeah. then you're you're all doing it as a group, and then as you said, people suggest things, and all of a sudden you're thinking, I'll I'll, I'll have a think about that, and then you come yeah. back and someone says, bloody hell, why did why did they not why did they not put that on the build or that should have been, you know, as you said, simple thing like that would just file the paint away, it's yeah. just made a complete. Well, you see, or as I said, now where I where I got that idea from the lad from someone from Facebook saying build the roof in sections, you just gone bloody hell, I never thought of that. You know, it's uh... well, it's so simple. Sometimes you're too busy looking at the, the trees to see the wood. It's like I painted my with screws on the back of my seats grey, and you yeah. said, I think you mentioned on Facebook, you went that was just in my face looking at me. I never thought of that. You know, people's doing you know, people's done all the other different designs, yeah. fab, you know, covering them over, splicing them up. Again, was to glue the back of the seats on, screw it in, the next day remove the screws, then fill them, mm -hmm. sand them flat, paint them. Just to have a paint on the screw because we, we didn't in the end because we thought, well, by the time you looked in the bus, yes. you look through the windows, you're probably not really going to know. I've seen people who – I've seen completed builds where they've not touched the screws at all, and they're not really in-your-face noticeable. No. Um, I haven't done mine. And yeah. It's, not can... it's, it's just a case of take it to the level where you're happy. Um Again, another thing I say with, with the painting, um, when I used to do figure painting, I'd get kids that come up to me and say, is this any good? And I'd say, it doesn't really matter what I think. Are you happy? And if they say, yes, I'm happy with it, then it's good. And then obviously you're always trying to, because the thing is no one's absolutely perfect at model making and stuff. And once you are perfect, 
then what's well, there's no point going on, is there? So well, I you, think I, my my enjoyment is when I do a mod, and then somebody else does it. Yeah, you, know, you, you see other you know, like I I got those posters made, and then I've seen other people's thinking that's my look that looks like my root master that, and you think oh no. It's, not just that. Maybe if you invent a mod and then someone else takes that mod to an to an extra step, that's brilliant. And you oh, look how the base the bases. Yeah, yeah, that how is. They yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, the bases. Yeah, because I've got the basic base, and I'm looking at yours. You've got the. I'm definitely going to do the mirrors. The mirrors and the, the lights on it, and as you said, it's just the marks on another version of, with, with mirrors and lights. And I think uh, Tony's done another version as well, so we've all come to the same conclusion. But we've all done. It's nice to say, well, that person might have one, one have never done thought of that. You, yeah. you sort of help the community along. Yeah, yeah. And then we all we all bump off each other, and it just yeah. Right, guys, so I do apologise that the uh, show has gone on a bit, but this is what happens when you have fantastic guests on. You never want to finish the show. Um, so unless anyone's got anything else they want to cover, I'm going to finish the show. It's three hours. Three hours, five minutes and 59 seconds. Um, yeah. So does anybody have a particular order they want to close the show? Me first or you first or... Um, let's just hang on, let's just do these last few comments. Oh, of course, yes. And then, uh, so Pam says, uh, Pascal do very well as before we rescued him. He got lost, uh, heavy, lost in heavy snow in South Wales in December 2010. We think he escaped from a puppy farm, uh, it's very pretty for boy, for a boy, uh, as a lot of people think he's a girl. Yeah, I remember you saying that before. I think that's quite funny, you know. Uh, and then, a dog sex based on its looks. Yeah, does that mean Dobermans and us? Yeah, does that mean all handbag dogs and girls and all all Dobermans and and um, and Alsatians are boys? <laughs> yeah. Everybody every, every thinks he's a little girl, but he's not. But he's a boy dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just has that. Well, it's funny, actually. I, um, I think this is the way you're kind of taught as a kid. Um, I always automatically assume a, a dog is a boy and a cat is a girl. Right. I, I think that's just like the kids' books where you read, it's like the, the dogs are always boys, aren't they? And, and, the, and the little girly cat. Um. Well, so yeah, so then Pam says uh, that there's hardly chocolate in Kit Kats, most of it's biscuit. Uh, and the chocolate in milk chocolate these days is normally milk, is mainly milk. I, I don't think a little bit of chocolate is going to do any harm. But what I used to do with my dog was not ever give it chocolate. So it, I find dogs want stuff once you, and I say, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not going to get into the debate. You you raise your dog how you want, and if your dog's happy, then you're doing a good job. If your dog is is unhappy, you might want to think about how you're raising it, and that's all it is to it, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's like that little doggy there in the middle of the screen. It's Steve's obviously not doing anything too bad, is he? No, it's a softer. Yeah, yeah, softer. <laughs> The other one's trying to get involved now. They're all the <laughs> jealous. Yeah, we'll get one go and they're all off. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we'll go down. Right. Uh, so Stephen Tyson says a long night, but excellent viewing. Uh, P40 F20 says great build tonight, Penny. Lots of interesting discussion as well. Uh, Pam says uh, some is 24 hours. With 24, definitely 24 hours. Uh, 24 goes from Hempster's uh, Heath to. Pimlico. 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 Well, just because the route is 24 hours doesn't mean the bus is the bus has to have a check at least once every 24 hours um so the bus may what they do is what will happen is when you get to a terminus that bus will run off to the depot 
but then another driver will be coming in with their bus and they will start the service at the terminus. So that will be the service going 24 hours, but not necessarily the bus, um, especially this is more outside of London, but you have you got any services, um, Steve, where maybe it's every half an hour or every yeah. 15 minutes and then in the evening it goes to hourly service? Drop, drops down to an hourly hour, yeah. So what you'll tend to find will happen is a bus will come in and then it'll go out again. The next bus, round about six-ish, will come into depot. Then he goes out of service. The next bus will come in and go out again. The next one will come in and drop out of service or, or something along those lines. Well, the way our, where ours, ours work, all, all ours go out from, say, four in the morning yeah. till seven o'clock. Say there's 30 buses on one route, 25 will run off between six, seven, and eight o'clock at night. And there will yeah. be sort of so many left to do yes. the full day service. Some of our buses go out at four, four o'clock in the morning, and the last one comes in for us at half past one in the morning. Yeah. They know the tank, the diesel tank, would last that long. We're presumably. The 24 hour service, the buses what run off about five, six o'clock at night, get yeah. cleaned. And the night men will come in to do the night shift and they'll they'll take them buses out then, won't they? What they've been all been prepped and ready to go back. I remember that at one particular depot I worked at, you had a couple of buses that you couldn't put on a particular duty, duty card, because the fuel tank won't hold enough diesel to run that particular yeah. um had to it if it goes out at like four in the morning it has to be back by about five in the evening and you had yeah. like the one that went out at six and didn't come back to 11 at night and that just wouldn't have had the fuel tank to run it yeah we, we we had that we had that when i worked on the old like the old leyland nationals you had to if you're on a late turn going to preston it would use a lot of fuel they had to make sure you had a you bought you took you, you ran that bus ran off, but you had to get a fresh bus. Yes, it all yeah. been fueled and cleaned, ready to go out for. Because you find you were running down the M6 back towards Wigan, and you would run out of diesel. Yes, if you didn't do that. One isn't it? Okay, right. and then so, last comment is uh, the mo uh, David Bassett says uh, Pepsi sends her love to Penny. Oh, bless Pepsi. I haven't seen Pepsi. For, I know you've been broadcasting on Facebook, but I've um, not always had a chance to spot it. But, yeah, I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll catch that. Uh, if I don't catch you, let's send me a picture of the dog. Blowing kisses to me. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So, I think that's the end of the show. Then. <laughs> yeah, really good show. Yeah, it was really good fun. Um, took a little bit longer than I thought it would. If you know, maybe if I thought it was going to take this long, I would have just said one issue. But um, I think we'll have other issues where we'll do two issues, and it's like, yeah, okay, we've been streaming half an hour, and I got nothing left to do. So it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? We can always stop. We it won't be the first time we've stopped mid-issue, is it? Um, so with that, I'm going to allow these lovely handsome chaps to uh, say their goodbyes. I always get the direction wrong when I'm pointing at you. It's opposite. Yeah, you've got the hang of it. Yeah, but you stream like a million times a week. Don't you? <laughs> I do it very infrequently. So. Um, okay. Well. Well, for me, yeah. Um... Yeah, thanks all for watching. Please give the video a, a like and uh, <clears throat> and um, subscribe if you haven't already. And um, yeah, I will see you for the next show. Uh, so yeah, that's it for me. All right. Well, I'll, I'll say my goodbyes as well. So uh, thank you for the invite. It's been nice to come catch up with yourselves and do root master build again, sort of thing. So yeah, thank you for the comments and. Uh, Hopefully, I'll, uh, I'll be back again shortly. Absolute pleasure. Always happy to have you on the show, Steve. And your expert knowledge is um, is most welcome. Um, so, yeah, guys. So, take care, everybody. Thank you very much. So, next week, we're doing 
forgotten the issue numbers already. 101, 100, no, 101, 102. Yeah, 101, 102. Yeah. So I forgot, I'd forgot issue 100. So I meant to do that right at the beginning, but never mind. Right. Take care, guys. Missing you already. Hopefully I'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Take care.